Era bela, bela, bela. That's bela, what bela, dreams bela, come true. Because I think it's because. Sorry. No, I don't. No, oh, you can keep it, talking. Your thought. Yeah, this yeah. is this is a good like uh, bonus so, feature. That's right. I think it's because people that are eating these have starved themselves with their diet, and so they do not eat chocolate donut sprinkles because uh, of the calorie count. And so it's just a way for them to bring those delicacies back into their life without really bringing in. Well, how many chocolate calories sprinkle. are in it? Let me check. All right. You check for how many calories. Let's introduce the episode. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Welcome. You to could, uh, uh, Eric. I'm sorry. You might want to sweet swing your or or move your mic to the left if that's more comfortable. Okay. I don't know. I'm seeing. Oh well, you're not centered There's on your chair. There's 190 calories. All right, that's nothing. Let's see, whereas like a donut is probably about 300. Yeah. Okay. So wait, like that? Is that what you want? Is this? Yeah, yeah. As long as it's close, like however you know to your comfort. All right, everyone watch, good? I'll watch what you're doing. Okay, so I'll do it like this. This is yeah. okay. All right, Eric's ready. Phil, you ready? Ready. I was born ready. Let's do <laughs> it. Welcome, everyone out there, to episode 20-something. 20 23, I believe. 23. Lucky 23 right here, MJ behind you. That's right. It's the Michael Jordan episode. Mm -hmm. uh, special shout out not to- Not the Leaving Neverland, MJ. No, no, no. <laughs> no, not to be confused. Did yes. I say Michael Jackson? No. That's. I think that's next week's episode. Yeah, Michael yeah. Jackson special. Well, anyway, I, well, I mean, we haven't gotten like we talked to kids into coming on yet. Right, we're working on it. Yeah. Starting with <laughs> Gavin. Don't you see, tell you see what I mean? This is what uh, Chris was saying that somehow uh, our show always ends up with like pedophile jokes. <laughs> you keep making pedophile jokes. It wasn't me. No, <laughs> no, no right. you started no. it. Right, <laughs> yeah. come on. It doesn't matter who started it. I'm ending it, and I'm also beginning this episode. <laughs> yes. Welcome to hear nothing, see nothing, say nothing. Your Trusted approximate news source. Uh, we've got our finger on the pulse of what is happening, what is now, what is current, and we are here to share it with you. I am joined, as always, with my dear friend, co host, co founder, Soulmate, Phil. Yeah. <laughs> and to my left, we have a first time guest, a dear friend of mine, former roommate, uh, soon to be expatriate. Expat. Of, yeah. You're going to be living that expat life. Yeah. But well, speaking Eric. of going to Ireland, we have to give shout outs to our fans in Ireland. That's right. <laughs> I'm uh, so, spoiler no. alert, uh, uh, Eric is moving to Ireland. Northern Ireland. And we're, and we're not joking, Eric. Like, we have a Podbean set up, oh, which yeah. is... Oh, yeah, and it tells you the location. Yeah, and uh, for some reason, our hugest, f like, base is from Ireland. So, yeah. So, but when you're out there, uh, don't be surprised if you get recognized on the street. See a lot of t-shirts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I'll give you. I'll give you a whole batch of like business cards to spread the word <laughs> That's more. That's right. Yes. If we can't get a fan base here, fuck <laughs> these people. <laughs> we can't get a fan base anywhere. What are we doing wrong? Uh, but Eric, welcome to the show. The um, first question. Happy I like to, to be ask, here. Yeah. Good. Uh, I always like to ask our guests uh, the first time they come on the show. Uh, have you listened to our podcast before? I was listening to the early episodes, mm -hmm. like pre YouTube episodes. Okay. We love to hear what made you stop. <laughs> no, just <laughs> uh, I, I'm not. I, I've only. I'm not like a. I don't know what podcaster is. Someone that does a podcast. Is there a term for someone that listens to a podcast? Podcast uh, loser like. Phil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, po I I don't frequent podcasts often. I've only recently gotten back into them, and so it's not uh, that it wasn't the pedophile jokes that <laughs> turned me away. <laughs> it was just it's something I don't make time for in my day, and so yeah. that's why. I, so that yeah, would, that would be it. So what can we do, Phil and myself? What can we do to maybe motivate you to? No, you know what I'm. I'm now I'm listening now that I'm listening to podcasts again. Uh, you guys are on Spotify, right? We sure are, and iTunes, and Podbean, and Blueberry, and Spotify, and Spotify, and iTunes. <laughs> this is a very well written plug. Uh, <laughs> good. Are we following the script? Are we following the script? Uh, okay, Phil. Uh, so yeah, now that I'm back into podcasts, I will add it to my roster, Perfect. and it's once a week, right? Good. It's, I don't it's know. like twice a month. We try to hit. Yeah. Sometimes it's once a month. I don't but think we really have like a tight release schedule. Yeah. We're kind of mysterious in that way. <laughs> um, keep like our a, fans like on the toes. It just we, we, like to play the, we like to play the market. Yeah, That's exactly right. Okay. Uh, we do a lot of analytics. We run the numbers and we release <laughs> it when everything is lined up. While it's uh, legal. you know. That's right. I, my Here's my only fear, and I probably should have asked the question before we started. Sure. 
but one time in college, Bill does stand up. I record it on my phone. I laugh a little bit too hard, <laughs> and that sound is more prevalent in the video than Bill's stand up. I don't want to doom this podcast by laughing too loud. If I chuckle away from the mic, no, no, does well, that get picked up? Well, well, no. When I mix it, it, it levels everything to the same volume. Okay. So yeah, yeah. Like I had that problem when I saw Smashing Pumpkins because mm -hmm. I thought, oh, this is blasting my fucking ears away. So I'll sing along, and I was super yeah. drunk. <laughs> tonight, tonight, tonight. Like you can't even hear the band. It's just literally that. All I got was comments. Who the fuck is singing? <laughs> oh, oh, not me. It was the guy behind me. Yeah. Yeah. What an asshole. Yeah. yeah. Um, but be prepared to laugh a lot because uh, Phil and I are very, very funny. Yeah, I'm, that's why I'm here. Wait, why are you here? <laughs> the, the comedy. <laughs> oh, nice. All right. See, we do have a fan. And you know what? It'll be, I mean, since you're going to Ireland, you'll, you'll get our useless updates of our lives, you know, by listening to them. <laughs> it's, it's a way for us to keep in touch. Yeah. Aww. So for our listeners, can but, you... But that is good because people our age are getting pretty disconnected, don't know? I mean... I don't know. If that's you could say more connected case. than ever, but also less connected. In I'm some all ways. alone, guys. Just go along with. Oh no. my god! Not this again. <laughs> You're not alone. You have two great friends in front of you. Yes, mm -hmm. it's teamwork. Uh, Eric, you're moving to Ireland, the UK. Will you give some background, some context? Will you tell your story for our listeners out there who are dying to hear it? How? My question would be. What version? Do you want the one-minute version, the which sexy. I quickly tell to coworkers, the five-minute version, which I will tell to friends, or the uh, extended edition as narrated by Will Ferrell that I could bring in in DVD format? Um, I like I like the Will Ferrell one. <laughs> yeah, we, we yeah. could use all the star <laughs> power. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come in next week. Um, but I know, no, so one, just tell the story. Let's see. So I guess the story starts 2013. I go to Japan and I spend a year there for uh, fun for or college. Okay. So in college, I go or I do a four a year abroad. I study at a university out there for a year. I pick up conversational Japanese. Please do not test me um, because I say conversational lightly. Uh, I they're, come. Well, they're not a very talkative people, so <laughs> conversational <laughs> Japanese is. Not that a lot of non-verbals, a lot of yeah. bowing, a lot of yeah. hand <laughs> gestures. Um, so I go there for a year and I'll skip over that year because all that's important is that I come back and I go to the university and I say, hey, I'm cultured now. I spent a year in a study abroad program. You should put me in charge of the international uh, section of housing and just let me take care of all the foreigners. Not like take care of the foreigners, sure. but put me in charge. Or I was, let me be the international RA. So because I know what it's like to be an international student, I could help them out of their problems. And so the university buys it. Suckers. Uh, and they let me be the international RA. And I'm imagining some sort of internment camp. Was it, was it like that? <laughs> the barbed the wire fences were 20 yards high. It was a farewell to man. <laughs> Man hard, roos yeah. hard rooster will set you free <laughs> <That's true>. oh, <laughs> wow <laughs> pedophile jokes and world war ii germany and humor um no so i am put in charge of the international wing this is where they and it's really nice because when i was in japan i was also in international housing and you know it's intimidating to be in a country where everyone speaks a new language or a different language it's nice to have uh that be next to people that are going through the same experience so I'm put in charge with everyone that's coming from a foreign country. Was it mostly people from the uh, U.S.? No. So it's everyone that wasn't from the United States. So oh, a lot okay. Of foreign nope. exchange students from like France, foreign exchange students from India, foreign okay. exchange students from other Asian countries. But what about Japan? When uh, you were living in their international... Oh, was yeah. That was, Americans? No, that was everywhere. Every, oh, okay. Everyone from every place in the world. There was like a Lithuanian student that I got or became good friends with, some people from Singapore. I think... It was mostly American students and students from different like Asian countries like China, Vietnam. Okay. Uh, but by, there were maybe like 50 of us total. Some, uh, some were like college age. Some were adults who had uh, gone into the program to just learn a different language. But mm. that's what I was through. And then I come back and I'm put in charge of 
all the foreign students who had c- chose to study in America. Sure. So I'm the only like American in this section of the housing. Um, there I meet Leah. Uh, Tell us about Leah. What's her so, story? And it's a bit, and I don't know if this, I don't know if I'm embellishing a little bit here or romanticizing or whatever, but it's a cute story because uh, my RD, and if you're unfamiliar with terminology, like, please, like, just ask me to explain it. So RD is resident director. He is the person who is the boss of the RAs, who are the students that sort out the various problems that other college students have on campus. And you were the RA for the international. RA of the international housing. Got it. And the NWA runs the <laughs> RA, <laughs> RA, right? Yeah. Uh, so uh, my RD, who is Zach Borello, quick shout out, great guy. Wonderful guy. He tells me that day, you know, school hasn't started yet. However, there are students moving in on campus, mm-hmm. and it wouldn't be a bad idea to just introduce yourself, to start building a human connection, so that when school does start, you've got some connection, you've got some history, and you're able to help uh, support them because you know who they are. So I, I, I take those si- wise words, and I apply it. And I you see, go checking out the senior <laughs> pretty ladies. Yeah, <laughs> so I see this group of students in front of the laundry room, uh, there's maybe about 12 of them. Uh, and I say, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to talk to these students. I don't know who, I don't know who they are, but I'll start building this, uh, human connection. So I introduce myself. I'm trying to remember names, but they're all foreign sounding names. So I'm not doing a good job. I actually, uh, mispronounced Leah's name as Leah for probably the first week that I knew her. Uh, I'm sure that was irritating. She still talks about well, it. Because she's a princess to you <laughs> at this point. <laughs> well, I just am a Star Wars dork, so I kind of wish sometimes that her <laughs> name was Leia, but it's okay. I, I can I can get past that. We'll edit that out if she watches <laughs> this. Uh, so I introduced myself to this group of foreign exchange students. Uh, they, happy to have a student who knows the campus talking to them, ask for a tour, and I indulge them in one. We kind of walk around the campus, and I don't know if you've talked much about UIS. Not much, no. Okay, so w- this campus in Springfield in the middle of nowhere, but it's got a lot of cool buildings, so I, I show them around, and at the center of UIS, there's this colonnade, and it's very similar to like Roman architecture, where it's these big pillars, uh, all supported with a nice like stone ring at the top of all the pillars connecting them. Uh, I don't know. What can we compare it to? How can we describe that oh, visual? Is that with like stone hinges, kind of like that, but just all put together? Yeah. Like big rocks? Yeah. Just nice Roman looking columns. All a bunch of statues? Great. Yeah. It says there's no statues. There's like an Abe Lincoln one close by, but this is okay. just. Okay. They're just like pillars. Pillars. Yeah. Just the buildings are like Roman, then like architecture. This is the only. I don't know why they have it. I don't know whose idea it was, but this is the only thing that's like picturesque Roman. Okay. Wasn't there like a fountain there too? Right, and that's where I'm going. That's where the yeah. story is going. So at the very center, in the middle of the pillars, there's a fountain, and I bullshit this group of foreign st- exchange students, and I say it's part of the UIS experience to run through the fountain <laughs> and they fucking buy it and they're all game and they're like all right let's run through the fountain all right, and, this and is i your first day meeting them this is yeah 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 <laughs> you, <deceive> them, <laughs> you take advantage of their well at, at first my thought was you know it'd be pretty funny if i get them to run through the fountain uh and but then they started doing it and they were having such a good time that i ran through the fountain too so just 12 of us uh, no one else has moved on to campus yet. Like this is just the foreign as a foreign exchange student, you come to campus early and try and familiarize yourself. Sure. So by and large, it's just us on campus. Mm. And so we're running through the fountain like lunatics, smiling and having a good time. And that's the first day I met Leah. I go <laughs> home. I uh, try and find some of them on Facebook. I'm adding them as friends. And uh, in Leah's time in the United States, I was able when her roommate got mono. Like I made sure that her roommate got to the hospital when when one of her roommates started peddling drugs and she was uncomfortable with it. We arranged for like a roommate switch, um, and so I just was so gallant in all of these acts of heroism that eventually she <laughs> fell so in love with me. <laughs> <laughs> that eventually she fell in love with me, and we've been together ever since. Nice. And she is from the UK. She is from Northern Ireland. That's okay. where she did her study abroad from from queen's university which is one of the more prestigious universities of northern ireland and you said this was around 2013 i think this was i think 2014 i went to japan 2015 i came back so this was like 
August 2015, so we've been together okay. for about almost four years now. So now fill in uh, the blanks. I, I think this is really cool, what you did. One, oh, yeah. And two, you're like the first person who isn't a scumbag. On the show. <laughs> <laughs> Do you hear the story about him tricking, tricking the them to go through the phone? <laughs> I just, well, because I've seen people go, like... We're not the only person have who have gone through the water fountain. Like people do do that, but they do it like when they graduate and stuff. Mm-hmm. I just thought it would be funny if we. If yeah, no, you got to have a little fun. It can't yeah. be. It'd be fucking boring to just have like a very by the book tour guide. You know. Plus, like I think some part of me knew that it would be a more memorable experience if I ended the tour with running through the water fountain. And hey, it was fun. So the blanks. So she left a year later. Um, we, I'm just curious. Did, we were did, short term, short distance for like a year. Then we went long distance for about three. We just got married three months ago in, in December. Bill officiated the ceremony. I don't know if you talked about that experience, but he did a phenomenal job. Thank you. Um, got married in December. I have since after the marriage, we applied for the marriage visa. We have got the approval from the United Kingdom government for me to move over there, and so I will be moving in two weeks. On the 19th, permanently. So this is like our mm. farewell Eric episode. Uh-huh. <laughs> and uh, also our, our Michael our Jordan hello. episode. Yeah, And, and also a hello, episode. Eric. Yes. Yes. <laughs> hello, Eric. Goodbye, Eric. Michael uh, Jordan. Hello, goodbye. Uh, Phil, you were going to ask a question? You yeah, said you were sorry. curious. Oh, I was saying like, because I don't remember Springfield like that, but I was a kid, so I got bored easily. Because mm-hmm. like, I, I don't know how to not be blunt, but it, you make it seem like it's amazing. Wait, did anybody <laughs> want to go to like Chicago yeah. or... Springfield was amazing because the people I s- hung out with in Springfield were amazing. Okay. I think if anyone moved to Springfield not knowing anyone, they would get very bored very quickly. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, because these were all foreign students. Nobody was yeah. like, well, we want to see Chicago. Fuck oh, Springfield. yeah. They, that's the thing about, and the same thing with the, the people who spend an extended amount of time in America see more of America than any American. I, I think that's true. Like, yeah. two years ago, I worked with um, teachers who had been brought in from Spain or Mexico to teach Spanish to American students. They they went to New York, they went to California, they went to Colorado, they went to like Oregon, they went to the East Coast, the West Coast, the South Coast, the everywhere. I even knew one guy who, he made it his like life's goal, or at least the goal of his time in America, to see 30 hard rock cafes. <laughs> so he went to 30 states to what see 30 different goal. hard rock cafes. I know, but I didn't want to that's tell like him a, that. That's like a National Lampoon movie. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so they, they went everywhere. They would, all of these foreign exchange students would travel. Um, they like, but not because they didn't enjoy Springfield, just because, you know, it's time in a foreign country. Mm-hmm. Similar to like how when I was in Japan, I went uh, north coast, like Hokkaido area, and I went as south as I could. You know, you just, once you're in a foreign country, you want as well explore it if right. it's the yeah. one chance you get. So they went everywhere. Yeah, it's really cool. Right. I'm so, you, you, wait, did you guys ever want to like both live in Japan? No? I I hope... We have an excuse to go someday. I like. I'm. I'm but saying. Like. I never hear s- anything about Ireland, so mm. I don't know. But I hear a lot of great stuff about Japan. I. I don't know. It's. Uh. It, I enjoyed my time there. I enjoyed my year there. I don't think if I went back, it would never be the college experience that I had. Sure. Okay. Like I. I did some really cool things. I met some really cool people. I joined a rock and roll club where they just did cover. Uh, co- a bunch of cover bands would play. You'd be interested. So <laughs> Rock and Roll Club was this group of college students who cared more about music than they did college. So they would spend most of their time doing cover songs and getting together maybe like bi-weekly to put on like hackney concerts Were they uh, dress for up each other. As the cover band? Mm, not really. They would just play Rage Against the Machine an awful lot most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> and and it was and I and I don't mean to mean to be like culturally insensitive and edit this out if it is uh, too far. It it won't be okay. Good. Uh, so it's just the it, if you saw Rush Hour one, uh, you know the part where Jackie Chan uh, sings "War, who, what is it good for?" So it was just that, but a bunch of Japanese students singing "Rage Against the Machine," <laughs> Metallica, Weezer. And like Nirvana, Booze and so, away. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 and that's why I became such a hot commodity to rock and roll club because I I can speak English moderately well, and so I quickly was chosen as a uh, vocalist despite like <laughs> lack of singing talent. Uh, they just wanted to hear like 
an English sounding music or like English, they wanted like an English sounding vocalist. So they picked me no matter what band they were doing. Uh, and so I had a really, really good time um, as the only white guy in rock and roll club. <laughs> Uh, so I had a great experience, I, but I could never recreate that if I went back. No, just no chance. It's, it's more just of like, like a vacation spot than yeah. Spot. And it's very much like part of my golden years that I don't think I could relive. Mm -hmm. Similar to like if I we all went back to Springfield, like if Bill and I had gone back to Springfield, it just wouldn't be the same exactly. Sure. Well, I think that can be said about anything in life. It'll never yeah be what it, it was. Yeah. So Lee and I are, uh, plan to live out our days in northern ireland at least for the time being that's the plan okay. because one free university so like our children will be able to go to college for is free northern ireland and separate from ireland yes. Yeah. yes so when you think this is what i tell coworkers, it's it's very it's simplification but northern ireland is more british than it is irish mm -hmm. like they share some cultural roots but if you think northern ireland think british and if you think ireland ireland then like that's what you imagine when you see like saint patrick's day uh, okay. decorum like the shamrock the uh, leprechaun all that stuff is more irish than it is northern irish okay the gaelic is irish yeah whereas nobody speaks gaelic in northern ireland because their roots are more british okay there there's a history lesson there but we're not going to do it why not because <laughs> i i'm not qualified to for teach sure. it uh so free college like kids would get to go to college for free i think a lot of parents like stress out about their kids college education and we wouldn't have that worry also leah's mom works as a nanny uh so she's a child minder is the terminology out there which means like daycare would be covered and mm -hmm. i don't know not having to deal with those two expenses would be really really good so yeah. both of those imply that you are definitely having children in the future do you know when do you guys have a we are we we do not have like a well 2022 that's the year okay. 2025 second child yeah we have our no, first no, son no no we we've never because we've been long distance so long we we've been long distance for three years we just want to you gotta enjoy, see what it's like to live yeah to live together for more because I teach and so I've been able to spend like three months out there but yeah that's three spending three months with the person you love and living with them is a little bit different so we're just mm -hmm. gonna enjoy. Some alone time before the yeah. little Cause, bastards. Cause no offense. Uh, <laughs> before the little bastards come into the picture. Hey, they're your kids, not ours. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not offended. And they are little bastards. They're all little bastards. <laughs> well, I teach, so I know what it's like to have kids. Yeah. Sure. Under your uh, responsibility. Okay. So. Uh, have you started looking for work out there? How is that process you've got your visa so you're i was gonna say uh d is the money transfer like is uh whatever you've made here worth a lot more there or? uh it's nothing like that the only time i've actually made money off of the currency exchange is i happen to be in northern ireland when brexit was voted for uh so when the brexit vote passed i was in northern ireland so the like the stock market tanked a little bit so i quickly went to the bank and exchanged five hundred dollars American cash to five hundred uh, British nice. pound, and made myself a clean two hundred dollars, which is pretty nice. Mm -hmm. But it's not like I'm incredibly wealthy with my bringing my savings account over there. It's mm. pretty much the same. Okay. So I've heard that it's a little more expensive. Perhaps, like I, I think for every for every American dollar, you get like 0.89 euro. Yeah. So there's it's a little not bit the euro. It would be British pound. Yeah. Yeah. So it's about that currency rate. Honestly, I have no idea. Like, I pretend to act like I know what Brexit is. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it's com it's like a it's, complicated I, I, thing, Nobody right? in Britain it's, knows what Brexit is. Yeah. So like, like the closest, the, the, the only thing I've ever said online, like, Brexit, I put, I had like a British shirt, and uh -huh. I'm like, oh, this is my new dance move. And I just like wobbled back and forth. <laughs> it's called Brexit. That's the furthest I know. I... It's been I th I forget what comedy is like, it like build the wall. No, no, I don't. I forget what like late show TV uh, comedian said it, but they described it. So essentially, it's Britain and the United Kingdom countries leaving the European Union, which is the collective of like thirty six countries. Okay. Okay, and that's so because of they just want to do their own thing. Okay. So they don't want to be part of this like international deal where all these countries agree that they're going to work together and give each other like discounted trade and oh because it's union yeah correct it's like a giant union that mm -hmm. britain wants out of 
I thought it was yeah, British, it Britain, and with, United Kingdom countries. I thought it had something to do with like uh, immigration. It it does because like the EU has their immigration policies, mm-hmm. like they'll accept this amount, and every country kind of has differing stances on it. But I don't think it's just immigration. Like it's just largely they want to make their own decisions, and they don't want to be like held back by the decisions that the European Union collective as a whole wants to make. Yeah. So they want out. They said we're not going to be part of your union anymore. And they're just trying to like figure out how it's going to look. And so they want out, they want to like govern themselves. They want to make their own rules. Mm -hmm. And the EU has said, well, if you're going to leave this agreement, you're going to have to bat, you're going to have to pay us for leaving. Like you're gonna have to pay this exit fee. And so they've been negotiating this deal of how they're going to leave. And so the reason why they haven't left yet, because they're still part of the European union is because they can't negotiate what the exit deal will look like. Like they can't work out, how well, the league is going to look. They could always do it the American way by instead of like putting a price on it, you just... Start wait, a war? Put, no, put, put your kids in a cage. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, it, I don't know. So they're trying to, they're trying to figure <laughs> Those out... little bastards. They're, they're trying to figure out how they want to leave and what it's going to look like after they're not a part of the union anymore, but no one can really say what it looks like, so they're trying to leave. They just haven't left yet. Yeah, and I'm obviously being sarcastic. Yeah. No, but. So now you mentioned like free free university for kids is that a eu policy or is that no a that's a that's a northern ireland thing that's still that'll still be uh in uh even after the full leave okay so it was happening before and it yeah there that is not in jeopardy got you um Do dis- people discounted german chocolates in jeopardy Ooh. free university we will still have okay healthcare still in play we'll we'll have it okay because that's a UK system, so gotcha. Like it's a the national like the national health care system is a UK enterprise, and so it doesn't go away with the EU. Um, but like you're gonna need like visas to travel anywhere, and that sort of thing is gonna change. Yeah, like borders. Isn't, there's like a huge change happening like currently, right? About uh, is it isn't it like a lot harder to leave US now, or, or I I don't know. I don't know what it. I don't know what I'm thinking. It's like on the tip of my tongue. I don't it's know. Like Eric did a fine job. Uh, I also gathered 500 pieces of paper and put them in the proper order and submitted all of this documentation and paid a hefty sum to get that visa. It takes, like, if it takes an awful lot of money, an awful lot of time, and an awful lot of paperwork in order mm-hmm. for the visa to go through. Um, it's a very, very difficult and complicated process, and I would not recommend it without a lawyer like at your side. But yeah. The lawyer costs a lot too. It's really, really hard to get the visa. Sure. And that's like UK imposing these rules and regulations, right? Correct. Because and the US does it too. Sure. So if you were planning to come to the United States, it's just as difficult to right. do it like the if legal Leah way. If were to come here. Yeah. But we did it. We got through. I don't know where the camera... Oh, the camera's over there. I haven't looked at it once. I don't know if I should be. I'm just kind of like staring yeah, well, maybe, this well, maybe direction. It, it might have made you more comfortable. <laughs> Some people, we turn it on and they just freeze up. Yeah. yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, really, is that a thing? Well, yeah. Like when I'm, uh, well, I'm not gonna mention specifically. <laughs> you, you know this fuck. Yeah. My no. worst guest ha- is. Yeah. No, was it, but but some people were like, oh wait, we have a camera going here. Oh. Uh, what's, uh, what's what's the next question? Uh, yeah. Speaking uh, of next question, what's your favorite Three Six Mafia song? Ooh. That's what it, we ask every guest, right? Yeah. I cannot say. <laughs> <laughs> because you like them all equally. Because I don't know who yeah. Three Six How Mafia about, is. How about, how about I apologize? Uh, how about our, another question we asked? Since you're leaving the U.S., so you might be able to. Uh-huh. What's your social security number? <laughs> uh, it starts with a three. <laughs> and really? uh, you're now you're one step closer to figuring it out. That do you know the first <laughs> number of your social security number uh, reflects where you were born? Really? Mm-hmm. So do we all have threes? No, I was born in New York. Zero. Really? You mm-hmm. were born. Uh-huh. So all New Yorkers are zeros? I don't know if it's all New Yorkers, but you can tell. I definitely have three, and I was born in Chicago. Huh. That's an interesting little fact. Did you know that every single Visa card begins with the number four, and every single MasterCard begins with the number five? I think I knew that much. And I think every like they also do that with license plates. Like when I got my car, everybody who got their car that year, which was 2017, starts with AS. Oh, weird. Yeah. No, because I know like my my I've gotten my debit card replaced a couple of times since I've been banking with Chase, and it's always the same like because there's four 
four digit uh sets yeah and what are they and <laughs> the third set has been the same every single debit card because i think that's like tied to my account but the last four digits changes every time hmm. i think i don't know there's there's some it's not just random yeah there's a method to the madness <laughs> could you imagine like the head executive at chase his job is just to like roll dice like he's playing fucking yahtzee <laughs> right. and that's how he decides what the numbers will be it's a very important process <laughs> it keeps the system working roll six 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 yahtzee okay. um sorry wait what's the cursing is there a cur- is this no a you could show? yeah you could say yeah, whatever the hell you want holocaust yeah. jokes pedophilia <laughs> jokes <laughs> but i mean like do you have to go I'm through trying to change man <laughs> Do you have to go through and like censor out the no. F word? No, 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 it's okay. all good. All right, we all right. could, we should, <laughs> don't. We should we? The, no. Okay. Well, we were gonna. Um, I mean, on a, I shouldn't announce it because it's gonna be a surprise, but it's gonna be very hard to do. So by the time we do it, uh, Ross has been trying his whole life to get laid, and <laughs> uh, we were trying. To, we all, man. We were trying to get a, a hooker to do it live during the show while we try and stick to topic. Because I found out on Filmora how to blur certain parts, so it, w- it would be legal. You found out on what? On film on the, the on new the app. Oh, is that the editing software? Yeah, yeah. Nice. So I mean, we could. I mean, y- we don't know what's happening in those blurs, <laughs> 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 right? After I said it, right? Right. It's like but the uh, Hemingway, like iceberg, like you see so much, but there's so much more. Yeah. Should should I mention speaking of lawyers? Should I mention what's going on at my, my work or I, no? I think you should. Why not? Yeah, should I? Forward. Okay. Eric yeah. I, I don't. I don't think Eric. anybody at my work is going to hear this. But so to update Eric, um, I I was telling you earlier about how there's a very huge old generation of Polish people at my job, mm-hmm. and there uh, a lot of them are alcoholics. A lot of them are assholes. It's particularly my um my boss. I reported him. This is the third time. He he he's fucking horrible. Just kind. I mean, shit like, you know, if I'm not doing something right, uh, there was like a a black like a black guy that was complaining to him, and I was listening because he called my name to listen to him complain, and he literally just went to my face and goes, "Oh, you want to be like that, N bomb?" And I was and, and I was like, "Well." I didn't I didn't know how to respond. Like it kind of like gets you in shock, you but know. It was in Polish. Yeah, so it was in Polish. Yeah, Bomsky. Yeah, literally. Yeah. It, it, in Polish, it's <laughs> and Bomsky. Yeah. So, uh, so I like I th- like one of the best welders is black. So I'm like, oh well, what about this guy? And he goes, oh well, he's one of the good and bombs, you know. And he, this is the kind of shit right. he says. He's fucking thrown tools at me. He's gotten a physical with me. Uh-huh. And I and people have said, oh man, I'd fucking shake him off. I'd push him away. But I like. I don't know if it's because I watch too many movies or because I bottle things up. I'm not joking. I would be afraid that I might kill him if I like went, Jesus. like like took the first step, because I would. I mean, we have a lot of like <laughs> deadly tools in welding shops, so sure, yeah, it'd be <laughs> really <laughs> easy to just <laughs> kill him. He, heat up a something metal that's orange and put it in his eyes, yeah. you know. So or anywhere really. Just yeah, but a- anyways, so I've been holding back. I've been trying to be more responsible and just report all this stuff, and they're fucking not doing anything. Oh, well, he's a hothead. Well, he's a hot, you know. So recently, um, I was so mad. I had way too much coffee, which I usually don't try to do because of my anxiety. And I, um, I, I also have to mention, I won the Best Writer Award in my college. So I was like, I literally had a segment wh- where they offered me to have my own show on their like co- like college thing for like a year of of poetry and stuff and creative writing. So I wrote this fucking next report like a goddamn lawyer. I wrote this shit like, y- you know. To whom it may concern. It, yeah, exactly. I literally wrote it. Like, I, like, Philip to, J. Lysitsky. No, that's exactly. Yeah, on this date at this time, experienced this type of behavior from blank. And this is absolutely not legal. This is absolutely not in good taste. And then I ended it off. You, you, you know, I put, I put in every single thing that I wrote, and I put, you know, if any, if I have been waiting for any further action that can be taken, I put something like, if you can answer the question of what can Trump, what else, what, what can Trump get away with more, it would be the same answer as to what my boss can get away well, with. You included that in yeah. your formal report. Yeah. And and then I'm just like, if 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 nothing gets changed, I have spoken to a workers' rights professional, and further action will precede this. And it freaked the go? fuck out of them. Okay. And also, 
what I didn't notice is I'm just trying to get this motherfucker out of there. Because literally everyone hates him there. They've written him up millions of times. Everybody asks me the same, same question. Why haven't they fired him? Why? Because he's a fucking immigrant who probably gets paid the same as me to be a manager and much more stressed out. The guy has a twitch in his neck and eyebrows <laughs> every day. <laughs> so anyways, um, so I wrote all this stuff. Like, like he was making fun of me that I have epilepsy because I didn't want to work overtime. Because okay. I told him, like, I will get a seizure in due to heat exhaustion. Okay. I need to take water breaks. I need to take breaks. And he kept calling me a baby. He kept calling me a little bitch. So I mentioned this again. They call me in this time. And normally it's just me and, like, HR. Uh-huh. They had their fucking attorney there. Ooh. And this guy looked, like, straight up something out of a movie because he had, like, a... You know what? You know, like, your high school diploma has, like, the burnt in golden seal uh-huh. Like like no, no like the like it says you know so and so high school and it's like it, like indented in the <laughs> front. He had like indented Oxford binder, indented Oxford briefcase. He's got like these expensive alligator cowboy boots, and he, he I mean he looks like something out of Wolf of Wall Street. Sure. And he's like, listen, um, we just want to make sure we accommodate you for everything. And I'm like. Wait Come what? This. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I, I'm there. I'm like, I'm, I'm waiting for them to fire this asshole. And I'm like, what does this have to do with Jake? Well, have you heard of the American Disability Association? Uh, we, we, we understand that you have one. What is it that you would need? And also, you would need to prove that because they didn't believe that I have one. So I just needed a note. So the funny thing is, this guy comes like every five minutes to my desk, to my cubicle, to like, mm-hmm. this is do, this is horrible. You, you work like, you work like woman, you know, and. Or, or he, he, like, I will check my phone because my pill reminder goes off because I have bad memory for my pills. So, basically, my doctor wrote a note that I have unlimited phone access, unlimited break time. Dude, for, nice. for, for heat exhaustion. And, 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 and this is all, like, it's not like I'm trying to scam them. It's true. But, but now, he basically, it's going to drive him nuts, you know? And uh, yeah, could you imagine like, being 16 and get unlimited phone access <laughs> to the doctor's note? Yeah, at work. Yeah, or at school. Oh man. Oh yeah, at school. But the thing—that's the thing—is like I don't even go on my phone. Like he just oh, exaggerates. Sure, he's sure. Trying no, to I get it. I'm just saying that would be a badass doctor's note yeah. to have. Yeah, and and I I was just freaked out because I'm like, are these guys trying to like patronize me that I have a disability or? Are they like, what are they aiming at? You know? And then like all, I, I, I like mentioned this to some coworkers that I trust. They're like, no man, you should sue. You should sue. So I had like a fucking anxiety attack Thursday. Cause I kept trying to like gather information to see if, cause technically he already made fun of me for having a disability, which was stated on my application. So they had pre-information and he, and he's, he's a stubborn fuck. So he doesn't even read through my reports. He just signs them. So if he signed it, acknowledging that he made fun of me, I mean, that right there is like disability discrimination. But then at the same time, how much are you going to fucking get out of suing a, a, a month check, you know, and lose a job? So I don't know. I don't know how that I'd rather works. keep my job and let everything like he's the only one I don't get along with. And he, he like nobody there hates each other other than him. Like I it's it's weird. Plus, he's like three to six years away from retirement, so sure. I don't give a fuck. Just play the long game. Yeah, because I need I need the money. Because I've mentioned to many people, I've got a wedding coming up. Hey, I'm, congratulations! <laughs> <laughs> that was so hard. <laughs> <That's>, yeah, <laughs> man. Really? I think I have to change that first time a scumbag. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But uh, yeah, so that's my situation. But um, so. Do we think we can get him fired? I don't. I don't think so. Okay. I think I might have to go with the uh, send him a poster to his address of him f- a- anally fucking his daughter. Or I really liked <laughs> your thought of like burning him like in the eyes. No. Like I think that's really uh, wise action to take. I think that would really improve. <laughs> you know. You know. You know. When I lo- when I googled like how do I get a narcissistic toxic boss fired, one of them was. <laughs> <laughs> what, what why did you go to g- okay anyway continue yeah, well, who well, well, well no well no because like a lot of people who would google that have a boss that gets away with 
things like racism and antagonizing and micromanaging. Okay. So th- there were some like reasonable answers, but it was like number three, last resort, try and uh, you know um, poison him no, no, uh, j- or her. Try, try and choreograph a way for him to like pub like in in front of witnesses injure you, you know. Like, like set like, a trap. Like be like, oh, can you help me pick this up? Why'd you let go my back? You know. So like, make it seem like he, or 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 I I don't know. Have him put some oil on a hammer that he's about to use, and it slips and hits you in the face, and that's abuse or something. You know, yeah. like. All right, risky. But no, 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 and, and stupid. Wait, that was the third answer. What were the first two? The first two was just like you know, uh, speak to a professional and. Uh, oh no, and and it was just uh, document everything, which is what I was doing on my phone. Just okay today, he like yeah, you know I I asked him about like okay your HR Eric, and I go hey is it okay if uh, you know if I'm having a little bit of vision problems and I'd like to you know opt in to for vision benefits just to get glasses? Could I opt out in a month? What would you you know how would you answer that? No, you can't. You have to wait until open enrollment. Yeah. And then you're in the plan. Yeah. And his answer was, you know, Philip, you are thinking like an immigrant in a sea of complete Shylock Jews. <laughs> you know? And you're dr- you're going to drown. They control everything. I'm like, okay. So is that a yes or a no? <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm like, you know, I had... Uh, uh, tell the, me something I don't it, know. Yeah, but by, by the way, I, I have some relatives who are, uh, are concentration camp survivors. <laughs> no, you don't. You are not Jewish. You don't even look like Jew. You have your small nose. That, that's literally what he said to me. So, and that's, uh, yeah. It gives you a whole perspective on, like, you know, what people are bitching about these days sure. and what people can get away with still, you know. So well, it's all about the situation. Yeah, yeah, but whatever. I I I feel good, and definitely after Thursdays, uh, because I panicked and I kept going to HR, and HR wrote me up for going to HR too much, (laughs) because I kept asking her to scan me my reports, and she said no, those are all in management, and I'm like, wait a minute, like the one, the most recent one is in management, correct? She goes, yeah. So then I came back later. I'm like, wait, what about the other ones where he already signed? No, they're all in management. Can I just get it, you know, fucking scan, please? And she's like, come, uh, I, w- I will come back to you. And when she came back, she had a fucking, she report. she like wrote me up for going to HR too much. You Is know? that how it said? Like, you, you come to us too much. Yeah, it was written that it, uh, Philip was leaving his cubicle to go to HR during, n- oh, someone's calling me. Uh-oh. So. Scam likely. So, yeah. Anyways. Well, I, I feel much better. And after Thursday's fiasco, no more coffee for me. All right. Some lessons we learned the hard way. <laughs> yeah. Eric, you like coffee? I do. How much coffee do you drink on a daily basis? Uh, coffee, not much. Mew Energy, though. Quick plug. I don't know if they're a sponsor or not, but Mew Energy, it's a way to get your water in. And also get your caffeine boost. How much Mio Energy do I drink a day? Too much. How much is too much? Uh, those bottles say add one little drop for a nice caffeine boost um, when you get tired during your work day. It's definitely a stream that goes into my water. Okay. It's too much, but I'm working on it. Wow. Progress not perfection. You, you don't get like anxiety or shakes from it? Mm, no, I need it to function. I'm like the opposite end. Okay. So I I have like the anxiety I get is when I'm tired. Like if I'm tired, I feel anxious. If I'm tired, I feel like s- like the self loathing or whatever sets yeah. in. Yeah. But uh, when I'm caffeinated, wait, when you're tired, you start. No, when I'm ca- no, it's not like hating myself. Sorry, self loathing was a little bit of, of, um much. But the anxiety and the kind of self analyzing. Like, yeah, the like worrying over every decision you make that sets in when I'm tired. But when I'm caffeinated, I'm in a good mood. Hmm. hmm. Yeah, analyze uh, that, Sigmund Freud. All right. Uh, you're obviously <laughs> in love with your mother. Oh, not again. Yeah, that's right. And that's totally okay. Yeah, speaking of uh, coffee and mothers. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> no, no. You, you, I, you, know, you know, Kelly told me just to tell this story as a stand-up. Right. Like, I don't even need to change anything. So Let's hear it. My, uh, I'll be the judge if you have to change anything. My <laughs> ma... She doesn't want to admit it. My brother doesn't want to admit it. 
she had a stroke <gasps> she doesn't want to like they how is this a funny story well uh i'll, I'll tell you but because because anyways <laughs> <laughs> Well, I made you laugh. See? Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, you laughed already. Got it. Well, no, well, no, no. Well, well, no. Because uh, she doesn't want to settle down. She still keeps drinking a gallon of coffee every morning. She still, she's like, I'm gonna go to Florida and relax finally. And it's like she's taking her whole business down there and will not fucking relax. Well, no. What I like, this was a goofy situation. Th- by the way, told by my brother, so he thought it was funny. They go to a U-Haul to. Uh, to okay. rent the thing out well, because she had a stroke half her face is paralyzed and she sounds like a deaf person when they talk okay. and her t- tongue is swollen so they go there and, and I, I, I might be over exaggerating my fact checking brother you know but they um no he's like um let i'm gonna translate for it because he's like around her so he knows what like her mumbles mean is sort her of speech uh-huh. that impacted like she oh, oh yeah no i she cr- dude and that's the other thing i'm not joking it's so bad she has a panic attack every time I speak to her. I'm not joking. Like literally, that's that people think. Oh, you only get panic attacks like once a year or something. No, she has it every fucking time. She goes out the window, starts gasping, runs out of breath, has the phone by her to call nine one one, because she's that like over analyzing of nobody understanding her voice. Oh, so th- I thought it was so the things you were saying that were giving her a panic attack. No, no, no. I'm I'm like completely No, she'll just talk to me about anything and I'm like, "Mom, I'm sorry. I don't understand. Well, hold on for wait till my brother comes in." And she like starts crying about it. It's wow. like she's that sensitive, you know. It it'll be anything like So, we're, they're at U-Haul and she's trying to get a dolly for her SUV. A- and they're like uh, you know, he, she's tr- she's like uh, to to my brother and my brother's like she's uh she would like to get a dolly for the U-Haul. Okay. They're looking it up. Well, um, it turns out that your model car uh, will not. Um, and she goes, and he's and he's like, oh, I'm I'm sorry, sir. He she I have to translate for. Um, she's not like challenged or anything. I I she had a stroke, so I just have to. She's not like mentally challenged or anything. He's like, okay, okay, yeah. Then no, but tell her that she does not have the right model for the car. For for a dolly. For yeah, like because um the the dollies that they had available at that location would scratch her car up so um oh. so so they'd want to like take the liability so he goes w- so my mom keeps mumbling she's like what he's like what what and she kept saying no that's not true and he just told her she's not mentally challenged she goes that's not true they do have the model because the cartoon picture is my exact car the, pi- the you get what i'm saying yeah yeah and my brother's like yeah I don't know what the fuck can tell this guy now. Sure. I just told her she's not ridiculous. <laughs> you know, s- you know uh. the cartoon says so. You know, but anyways, <laughs> and 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 you know, and, and dude, it was so bad because I like when I wake up is like when I have the most like try to make people laugh, and then like right after that they went to the house because I was there to help them move, and <laughs> this is so bad. But um, she's talking to me again, and I'm trying to just be social with her. She, I can't understand what she's saying. So I'm like, do you do you understand Kelly? And Kelly's like, no, no. And Becca's right there. And she just took like the hugest fucking bite out of an avocado sandwich. So I go, Becca, what did she say? And she goes, oh, oh, oh. I'm like, oh, no. I'm like, wait, a minute. The, is everyone speaking her language right now? You know, I don't know what the fuck is going on. And yeah, she ran out of the room crying. Oh, <laughs> I was that is I, a fun story. <laughs> Right. So your mom's doing okay. I I hope so, cause, I mean, y- you know, I I don't know if I told you guys, but yeah. So she was gonna throw out like, my mom. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned this. She was had a huge fabric business. She made. Oh, was that why all the fabric is all around this house? Yeah, yeah. Okay, because I was I was there for those of you who uh, don't know, which might be a lot of you. Uh, <laughs> there are spools. Of fabric through in most every room <laughs> in this house, there's at least what in that room up there. There's got to be at least like a hundred, yeah, giant um, spools of fabric. Did you um, did you see over here? Yeah, I did. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> much fabric, and so I was kind of running through my head the possible scenarios <laughs> that like either one you're you like are into making tablecloths or you 
you use it to wrap your Christmas presents or okay, but that's from your mom who's in the industry or something. Yeah, do you remember my condo? Like remember how my bed Very was? very very little. Well, remember how we like sat on my bed cuz I didn't have any seats? Yeah. That whole thing like headboard it was made by my mom. Oh, that's and really cool. She uh, the like the biggest story I tell is like she did um one of Oprah's apartments and then you know Lori that's on Shark Tank? Yes. She's the blonde one who's on like Yeah, 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 yeah. She did one of her places in Florida. That's awesome. And uh so she does our, she's been doing this for years since I was a kid. It was fun because uh, that's how I would get uh kids freaked out i'd be like we have a sweatshop in our basement <laughs> like no you don't and then i go there and there's like 20 sewing machines you know but um anyways so she was gonna throw them out like she was gonna just buy get some like junkers to come by and just rent a dumpster and some of these fabrics i'm not kidding they have like specks of gold knitted in them so i'm gonna sell them all on etsy yeah all right i don't know how how much are they worth? Like, how do you figure that out? Well, like, how will, well, like, so I buy, so I've been making patches recently. Like, uh, I mean, you've seen my jacket now <laughs> covered in, and, um, so that's all duck canvas, which is used for like outdoor umbrella, pat like umbrellas for patios. Mm, okay. That shit is like on sale, $7 a yard, usually $10 a yard. So anything that my Maya has is going to be like $20 a yard. Wow. And I could sell it even for ten. It's free fucking money, right? You know, so I mean, free your mom's money. Well, you, she was going to toss it. I mean, I guess. I, yeah. guess. I think you should give them your mom some of that change. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like you're the one doing. You're the one doing the selling. I agree. Yeah, like, you were entitled to some of that money, but like that's your mom's fabric. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I don't, I don't even out. Get her a U-Haul or something, right? <laughs> or a car that can use a dolly. Yeah, and not yeah, get yeah. All scratched up. Get the fabrics on a dolly. It might, might get you know, start a fire on the way. That's right. Have you considered like picking up the family business of no. designing drapes no, and upholstery? Yeah, were you no. taught any of the family secrets or like trade secrets when you were a child? I think honestly, naturally, I have a way to design. I'm not <laughs> it's kidding. Genetic? No, no. <laughs> well, 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 no. Like you know, like nature and nurture. Like being around it, I have like a way better sense of like even i mean i'm not trying to fucking like you know massage my own ego but like i think i have like sometimes like a better sense of dressing than like people that i know okay. or, or or even like a way of designing a room like where to put what couch or something or where to put what pillows these chairs and are really well arranged around the table <laughs> i've been thinking that for a while yeah well <laughs> i mean like i don't know i but uh, I, some things that I, well, like like that castle I made from scratch for the cats. Oh yeah, that's really cool. I really yeah. appreciate that. I really yeah. like the a sign that's hung from <laughs> what would be the castle gate. Yeah. What does it? Say? How do, what does it read? Castlevania. Castlevania. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought that was really clever. Yeah, I, I you know because my so because my ma's an interior designer, uh -huh. she never let me have any fucking pets. And I, I oh, because so there's just so much fabric that could potentially be yeah, scratched or yeah, fur like pissed allergy. on. Okay, yeah. so I I was like, once we got one cat, I freaked out and I built this four by four foot castle. Uh huh. And then like you know, because I kind of like got all my access that I wanted for music and podcasts in the basement. Kelly's like, well, I want to foster cats. So she like like why do we have this huge fucking castle for one cat? <laughs> uh huh. And so we like at first, I'm not joking. Like I thought she meant like so we had Pierogi and Lucy. Uh huh. And I thought that was en enough. And then she went to I'm like, oh, I like cats. We'll have more. She said I want to foster them. So I thought one was gonna come, and I come home, and there's six fucking cats. <laughs> okay, can you can you explain that to me really quickly? Here's my question about fostering cats. Yeah. Um. So Leah's worried that because it's like we'll be doing so much traveling like back and forth between the two countries mm -hmm. that it would be annoying to have to find like a cat sitter to or someone to like check in on the cats for like months at a time if the two of us plan to come back to America maybe like two months of the year for if you foster how long do you keep the cats for like is that a is that a viable option for the two of us because we don't want to Oh, become cat owners because then we'd have to find someone to take care of these cats for yeah. months. No, is fosters, fostering fostering is a great option. Is for you because yeah. uh, you 
basically so like in my situation i get to keep betty the tuxedo one uh-huh. i keep her until somebody adopts her and because of those weird fucking growls that uh-huh. i was talking about no nobody wants her <laughs> <laughs> and she's very scratchy uh-huh. like i've never been i, I went to are work are you raking in checks from the oh no no you don't get che- it's just that like any donations that go there um you basically get a free cat and free everything because like they have donations of litter and food that oh, they provide. Oh, that's and really cool. Yeah. So um, and and, and at the same time, like, oh, and that prevents like crazy cat people from fostering like forty cats for the sake of making money or something. Yeah, yeah. Because they don't, you don't actually give in cash. You're just given equipment to take care of the cats. Yeah. Okay. And and like you don't pay for the cat because you're adopting it. So. Correct. 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 Yeah, that's really cool. And you can like if you if, so for your case, if you want to travel, you can just go to the fostering place and be like, yo, um, we can't take care of it, so you mm-hmm. just give it back, and then hopefully it might be still there <laughs> when you come back. Back. Yeah. Somebody might buy. We change our minds. We're ready to be cat parents. You gotta put. <laughs> you gotta make her a, a cunt like Betty, so nobody adopts her. No. no but Betty will find a home. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if any of you are in the uh, in the want to adopt a cat, there's a perfectly cute one upstairs. Talk to Phil. Yeah. yeah that's right. Her name is Betty. She's very scratchy. Very she scratchy. Makes weird noises. Yeah. But they're kind of cool. Yeah. No. Wh- what's really funny is like Progi plays too hard. And Betty hates him so much that she doesn't even get hurt and already starts screaming like when he comes by. Aww. So like we'll be we'll how be does s- a cat scream, Phil? Just oh. <laughs> like, and 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 the funny th- well well yeah I'm not gonna mention it, Bill, but listening to black metal really helps me communicate with them because like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not joking, because Betty will jump on my fucking... So you'll put the record on, and the cats will say, wow, they're speaking our native language. I don't believe you. Yeah, I'm not joking. When I put it on, they'll get scared. Or, But most of the time, I'm not going to, all right, YouTube, what song do I put on next? You know, I just... She'll jump on the TV when I'm watching, like, a movie, and there's a star in the sky, so she'll think it's, like, something, like, a laser to chase. So I just, like, I'm sitting there, I just... (laughs) And it just runs away. (laughs) <laughs> so it's so weird <laughs> all right but uh it's probably getting freaked out right now not to be honest i probably heard that right now but oh, yeah i feel like loud noises in general scare cats and but and yeah. me <laughs> you know i i heard this but i think it's complete bullshit that cats try to um because humans react to a baby crying and that's what they're mocking but but there's fucking so many cats. Like, I guarantee you, my cats, when the fuck did they hear a baby crying? You know what I mean? Like, well, Wait, say, say, say that again? So cats... What is the theory? To, to get a human's attention, like when they're hungry or something, they mock a baby crying with... Uh, uh, like, that's, that's how... The, that's why a meow sounds like a meow. Because, like... Whoa. Like, when a cat... Like when a cat gets scared, it literally sounds like a human gargling listerine. Just so really? yeah, yeah. That, you're that's you're really good at cat noises, by the way. Like it's a <laughs> hidden talent of yours. <laughs> <laughs> the cat whisperer. <laughs> well, well, you always said I should do impressions, but that's kind of hacky. No, that, no. I like <laughs> I'm just saying uh, cat impressions. I don't think you should uh, venture much further than the hat. Thanks, man. And I'm gonna try and get Eric to sing before we're done here today. So. <laughs> But um, yeah, no, that's that's, I I'm I'm trying to think of like the weirdest fucking noise I heard, by her. <laughs> oh oh yeah no it, it's, um the the funniest noise that Betty makes, we used to have um so how I mentioned before how cats love running water, uh-huh. we had like this uh, like a fountain it's it was pretty much a water bowl with a bubbler, so it was like a mini mini waterfall or whatever, mm-hmm. and sometimes it would get broken. Because the water would run out, so it was just pumping air, and it sounded. That's what Betty sounded one day. Because <laughs> as soon as Progi starts nearing and she doesn't realize it, she just goes like, oh, "Like ah, you're gonna fuck with me now." Yeah, <laughs> 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 it's just so funny to watch. Like, oh man, but but it's that dude. That shit like freaked me out sleeping, like hearing her screaming at night. Like, I mean, we got used to it. Sure. But uh, we like no. I I recently. That's the biggest fucking argument I ever got into with Kelly. I never like I mentioned before. Me and my fiance have never gotten into any arguments. And like a month ago, 
I was like not getting any fucking sleep for like three days because the cats are having fucking LA riots throughout the whole night and they're knocking shit over. They're, they're ripping shit apart. There's, you know, she's screaming, uh, the cat. <laughs> and I mean, I, I told her, I'm like, listen, we're, we're fucking getting rid of them. We're you told like, that to the cat. Yeah. Yeah. I sat him down. I put a form- <laughs> formal tie on with my underwear, you know, right. But no, I was I, I I was like I'm getting fucking rid of them, and K- Kelly like started crying. Cause here, yeah, here's another thing I googled. I'm like, I googled. I don't give a fuck about animals. Am I a psychopath? Sure. <laughs> because Yahoo answers no, again. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, because there's I I don't know if it's like I don't know what to call it. If it's like a European thing, or maybe like a I I don't know. Like to me, if one of my cats like died, I would just get another one the next day. Like not even think twice about it. Sure. You and don't have like a special bond with pierogi. I, I, I don't. I mean, I, I feel people who do are the people who just sit at home and, and play with them all day. Like they have fucking no life. They And I'm not saying... Ooh, not, that's, not, that's a harsh criticism they, yeah, yeah, to deliver. No, that, that's harsh. I'm saying like they don't they don't go out. If you, know, you they, care about your animals, you have no life, according to Phil. No, no, not no. Well, 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 no, you just spend so much time that it would like... Oh, okay, okay, okay. So I don't know. I mean, I just yeah. I and, and I, I guess there's other people like that out there who just well, you get another cat. Plus, you know, like I, I like this is all the defenses I had to tell to Kelly. I'm like, she's like, well, no, they animals care about you. I'm like, yeah. When you die, a dog will weep. When you die, a cat just circles you, looks for food in your pockets, and goes towards the food <laughs> to the <your> neighbor. <laughs> you know, like don't fucking form a bond. These are scavengers. You know, like. So I don't know, and and then like two days later, I smoked my CBD, cut off the g- caffeine, you know, c- cut off the information overload of podcasts I was listening to. And I'm like, oh, I love these cats. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, Did you just just stay at home and play with them all day. No, I mean, I just I I didn't get rid of them. I guess that was my <laughs> reward. <laughs> Sounds but like uh, someone doesn't have a life. Yeah, man. <laughs> I think that there's a line that. A lot of people cross. I yeah, get so I uncomfortable. People yeah. People call themselves like dog mom. Like oh, my mom. God. Oh, like they get the fucking bumper stickers, then have a birthday cake <laughs> or some, some shit. <laughs> that shit is so fuck. Like, 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 okay, you know, maybe this is getting too harsh again, but like Kelly's fucking um, aunt, it's like she's divorced, hates men, is a feminist and is hu- loves cats. I'm like, okay, well, wow. Done. Divorced, hates men, is a feminist, and and is obsessed, obsessed with cats. Okay. like she got mad at me because I was gonna shave a mohawk into pierogi. Yeah, and like oh, she and didn't want to. And I'm like, wow, how surprising that all of these, you, you know, I that I, th- there's no other women out there like you, you know, like wow, wow you know, it's just it, 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 I don't I don't get it. It's like, wait, but. I, how does she show her affection for the cats? That bugs you. Like well, how much well, does no, she I'm say- love well, her well, cats? Well, no, I'm saying like, well, you, you, well, well, she like giving me all this information about how well it regulates their temperature, and, and you can't, <laughs> and you know it, the, the 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 furry ones need the fur, and you and you and you have to let the hair get all over your house. You have to have it all over your house, and you have to pick it up if you love them enough. Like, or I could just fucking shave them and turn the temperature up. You know, like, I don't know. I just. At the end of the day, if I was a cat, I'd be like, what the fuck is this weirdo, like, care about me so much? This is weird, you know? I don't know. I agree. I agree with that statement a lot because I'm sure there's a lot of people that put a lot of time and effort into their animal portraits. And if I was an animal and been forced to sit still for, like, a 45-minute photo session, like, that's just something that goes against their nature. Yeah. And you're doing more harm than good for your sake and not being kind to your animal. Yeah. I and on, I, I agree. See, so I, I, I see it. So so here's a, a really funny thing. I I had to like therapeutically go step by step to explain to Kelly about my thoughts on animals because so two years ago she was really mad because Gavin and her grew up with a ferret. This ha- do, 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 do you know <laughs> do you know anything about ferrets? I Eric? actually and uh, this is the honest truth. I am terrified of ferrets. Really? I've never owned one. But I just, whenever you're going to Petco, there's definitely like a ferret section and there'd be like three or four ferrets and the ferrets can never get along and they're always burying their little fangs at each other. 
and I know it's um, un, I, un, unreasonable of me to get so scared, but like I just, maybe it was a little kid and maybe it was a traumatic experience, <laughs> but these ferrets just bearing their little tiny fangs well, have, at another ferret have, who's got little tiny fangs just really scared me and I never wanted one of those animals in my house. Well, have you have you had any dreams of ferrets? Maybe perhaps you should try an isolation tank and see if you have any <laughs> ferret visions. <laughs> no, but I, I just, ferrets are the one creature that scared me the most and it's because they were always fighting at fucking Petco. That's a bad business model. If you're trying to sell ferrets. <coughs> yeah, agreed, yeah. agreed. Like, oh, look, they like to fight. <laughs> yeah. Which I guess targets well, a certain consumer, like uh, fighting ferrets. Yeah. Well, like, wh- when I went to go find a cat, I was like, wait, we're going to the rescue? Fuck yeah. I don't want some pussy from the pe- from a Petco that's, like, you know, wait, spoiling shit. did you mean shit. that to mean cat, or did you mean that to mean... P- a pussy <laughs> pussy, you know? But so, so, yes... <laughs> So I'm, I'm like, yeah, I want a fucking beast. Like this lady's like, oh, don't touch that one. He's he's a little ferocious. She 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 bites. She bites. I'm like, well, which one bites the most? I want that one. Yeah. Like legit. Yeah. Like I want a fucking little tiger in my house. You know. So I, and you know I'm not gonna get like some cutesy fatso in that castle that just lays around all day and smells like the tuna they rolled in. You know. So, anyways, ferrets. Yeah. <laughs> so ferrets. Ke- Kelly and Gavin had this ferret for like. All of Gavin's life. Wait, time out. Who's Gavin? Uh, my stepkid. Okay, my stepson. It. Yeah, and he. Um, f- so something you don't know about ferrets, the you know, like dogs piss on like trees and shit to leave their mark. Cats will rub up against you with their head or their side to leave their mark. Ferrets take a huge piss and roll around in it, and then rub up against things. So like we moved into this house. Gavin's, you know, it's it's tough on a kid to be the new kid, and yeah. all of his fucking clothes smell it's like piss. Ferret piss, yeah. And I'm like, and and, the, and I just like, I'm I don't know if it, this is definitely something from my mom. I'm like sensitive to smell. I'm like, if you smell like shit, please take a shower, you know. And I'm like, there's no excuse. For, we have to get rid of this. He doesn't like add. He he has a fucking cage in Gavin's dark closet. What does he add to this family? You know what I mean? Other than that fucking stink, you know? <laughs> sure. And then and then like and so I'm trying to talk to this kid and she's like no but he was goofy and stuff because like they would take it out and the funny thing was when he'd get excited I'm not even kidding you know how slinky and long they are mm-hmm. he would twerk backwards and yeah. so, so I'm telling Kelly I'm like you had a depressing moment in your life and this ferret was here to make you laugh when you had a depressing moment in your life that is why you have a bond. It's not that you like a ferret, okay? The next time you get depressed, I will dress up like a stretched out raccoon and twerk backwards. <laughs> and it will make you... And, and I that made sounds her. terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> That's... Why, why are you scared of ferrets? He saw you in your ferret suit twerking. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it's fucking true, you know? And, and, and she kind of like half agreed with it, you know? Like, what, what bond, like... I, she was still crying. I'm like, I'm like, she's telling me she's like, no, you, you're a psychopath that you don't have a connection with animals. I'm like, you're crying about a ferret two years later. And that, I googled it. That, I'm not a psychopath. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, my argument was like two years later. Like, like I think I heard that exact Doctor Phil episode. You know, I'm crying about a ferret two years later. You know, I don't know. I mean, whatever. So, anyways, and then she would like tickle it, and it would like look like it's giggling but i think it was because it was out of breath and losing air you know so whatever point is we ended up getting a cat <laughs> cast yeah. yeah so eric consider getting a parent to right. solve I you and leah's troubles about the pet dilemma i will and i will want cats are definitely the easiest if you're going to travel because okay. you leave a fucking you leave their food out and they you know clean themselves right i've never i've you know we actually one of um Betty's brothers, Crocker, he was one of those furry cats that looks like they touched a static ball, mm-hmm. you know, like fur. And that one I had to, like, wash under sink all the time because he started getting the shits out of nowhere, and it was, like, sticking all over his hair. Uh, like, and walking around the house and putting it on everything. So, uh, so we were like, quickly, get it adopted. Don't mention anything about the thin stool, you know. <laughs> And sure enough, they, 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 like, reported it. Did you guys have any thin stool problems? No. What, what have you done to Crocker? Yeah. Wait, thin stool is in, like, runny shit? Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. So, yeah. 
All right. So don't don't get cats. Do get cats. Don't cats. get don't get a furry one or or fucking shave, you know, some damn graphics into the side of it like Kings for Life. Yeah. You know. So, Eric, are you taking notes? Yeah. What are you drawing? Uh, the Red Bull, the piece of tape, the weight, this little face, this uh, crown royal bag that is placed over the Buddha statue because the Buddha statue was too intricate and I didn't want to deal with it, and this milk jug. And how are they? How are they coming along? Uh, everything barring this little jar is good. Okay. Uh, when you're done with your work, I recommend you bring it up to the camera so the viewers can... It's not going to be that nice. But okay. Yeah, I, I can do that. I think you still should. I will. So uh, w- anything new with you guys? Anything recent? No? Uh, Eric is moving to a different country here in about <laughs> a <laughs> week or two. Uh, what's new? Well, I guess I'm not... I'm I'm new, so are everything you, are is new. Are, are, are you not going to like miss any friends here? See, are you going to visit that's, frequently? That's the, and I don't want to turn this into a soap opera. I feel like that would take away from the lighthearted, comedic uh, nature of this podcast. No, we're hard hitting. We ask, <laughs> we ask the you, tough <laughs> questions here. You're, you're, you're trying to get into so, uh, you Googled, no. I don't give a fuck about my friends. Am I a psychopath? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, like this week, er, I got two weeks left. And Leah's over the moon, you know. She's got a countdown of days that are left. She's honestly, like, counting down the seconds. And I mean that in every sense of the word. She's just over the moon to have me be there with her so we can start our married life together. Man. Um, What's love like? It's great. However, at the current moment, and I wish I could be that excited, but I'm not because there's so much here that I care about, so it's very bittersweet. And I wish I could get as excited as she is, but because I've got great friends and great family members, uh, it's it's a weird it's a weird time that I'm in right now. Cause I do want to leave, I do want to start my adult life, I do love my wife, and I'm excited to go over, but I'm also giving a lot up, and so it's a weird swell of emotions inside me, and that's what's going on. A new chapter. Yeah, a new chapter. Uh, again, like I don't have bells on my heels on the way to the airport. I am excited, and I think deep down I do, or I am ex- as happy to be living with Leah as she is. But right now, it's just there's a lot that I'm leaving, and so it's hard. It's complicated, you know. Yeah, well, it'll only get easier. <laughs> yeah, time away makes it get easier. And oh, sometimes but, saying "fuck it" just ah uh, yeah is, is good. Well, that's is good. But uh, but what I do appreciate is that most everyone in my life is very supportive of the relationship I'm in and very like happy for me. And so it does make it easier to like go to a foreign country when your close friends and family are supportive in your decision. So mm. sure that helps. So are there people that have not been supportive? Are you catching any flack? I there are jabs that are being made by friends things like oh hey eric's not going to be there for my birthday next year wow what a great friend uh just <laughs> just like just like very just things I like gotta that say, wow but what think, a great friend uh, but but i think at least uh phil we're not as well acquainted but I, I think humor is how people process uh difficult things like if people sure. are going through difficult times coping. they yeah a coping mechanism is just making light of the situation through use of comedy. Uh, and so I they're think, not being serious. Yeah, I think that's just an outlet. Like the subtle jabs at me for not being there for their birthdays and, oh, wow, uh, you're going to miss this this year? I can't believe it. Some guy you are. I, I think that's just process them processing, like, missing me a little mm. bit. So, but it's, it's good. I don't know. I'm excited for the move. I'm excited for the transition. I'm excited for the new life. And I, I Bill has said this before to me he said that he really enjoys meeting people for the first time and you know, almost more than hanging out with a friend or like a good friend that you've known your whole life like there's something just really enjoyable about meeting new people and just getting to know people uh and so i've got a whole country of people that i've never seen before and i'm excited to just I- immerse myself in it yeah that so, is exciting. Yeah, I, I, I'm very excited for. I'm gonna miss. I'm gonna miss everyone here, but I'm also excited to for meet sure. all new people. Is uh, her family pretty supportive? Yeah, her family's great. Uh, Bill has met her mother, father, and cousins, and 
I, I like them all a lot. So, yeah. and I know if we ever do get in trouble over there, they've got my back. Yeah. So that's positive. Yeah, my my family in Poland is much more supportive. As much as I haven't seen them, I'm way more supportive than my family here. I feel like I've got more drama here, but that's that's why I was asking. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, because like for, I mean, what I'm thinking about is like, I'm getting married recently, or <laughs> soon. Soon. Yeah, recently. Uh, and just like moving in together, having to support a kid, trying to have some spending money when we go to on our bachelor's trip to mm-hmm. Amsterdam. Amsterdam. Just like, and, and, and you know what? Even if when all is that. Sh- Can we pause really quickly? When are you going? Uh, May 12th? May 13th? Okay. Yeah, May 13th. That's so exciting. Yeah. And but but I mean like all that all that shit aside, like having to be a stepfather and wanting to have a fucking second kid and being underpaid as fuck cuz I have to like I I have to like from what I know, I just have to gain experience. I've never stuck with a job because of personal issues of my own and honestly just figuring myself out and I just it's so hard living check to check. Yeah. So to me, like, I would be so anxious, like, having to move, like, overseas and be like, where am I going to, you know, be employed and stuff. And see, and... And maybe even get, like, her family mad or ah, something, you know? Man, I'm, I'm scared about some things, but I've got an awful lot of confidence going into this. And That's I'm, awesome. Yeah, I feel, I feel really... And it's, it's partially because, like, I know her family. I love her family. I have... Now that I'm, like, three years in the teaching business... I'm decent at it and I know I can find work in it later on. I've met yeah. a lot of great coworkers who have lot, taught me a lot of um, valuable lessons about how to do teaching and because I have learned so much from them, I'm good at what I do and so I have no worry that I'll find work and it'll be okay. Have you done any teaching or like any volunteer work? Uh, yeah, I did volunteer work. I, it was actually really fun. Ireland. Yeah, I got into a high school out there and so i was in like the classroom and i have some experience but i'm also going to sub when i go out there sure. and is like, it more or less like the same and setup this is what i told lewis your brother and he thought it was really funny because they actually do use the term like headmaster at every <gasps> school <laughs> and so like for british people it's a, it's a very common phrase like it's just a run-of-the-mill term that you hear every so often like the american equivalent like principal or perhaps superintendent mm-hmm. But to me, the only time I've heard the word headmaster being used... Albus Dumbledore. Yeah, it's, it's fucking Albus Dumbledore. So it's just going to tickle my fancy as I walk into a school and the headmaster's office uh, is at the front of the building and the headmaster calls to see a certain student and there's a head boy, like head boy and head girl are things really? that exist in schools out there. Like prefix? And yeah, all, very similar. And like they all wear little uniforms with ties and such. So it's just, no matter what school I end up with, it's going to be Hogwarts to me. And I don't know how long that novelty will stay, but it's really, really funny. Well, so Hogwarts, in my mind, has always been like a private school. Like that's like, the Catholic school. Yeah, but no, like, these like are public schools where everybody really? wears a tie to school and everything. Yeah, and s- different Weird. schools have different color ties, and that's how you distinguish the schools because they have different like yeah. emblems. Like I think that shields. shit is good. Yeah. People, I, I think that's, I mean, I'm not going to be this old man on my soapbox. Here we go. Like, kids today. Yeah, well, well, kids we'll know, these we'll, days. We'll know, these we'll, days. We'll, well, no, I mean, I think so many people lack discipline. discipline. Like the, 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 the process of life there's going to be so much shit that you have to do that you don't want to. And I don't know. I, I feel like the idea of having to break rules at a certain point has been taken to the extreme where you're just like, no, I don't believe in that. Like, like, like people have just, I, I, I don't know, to the point where oh, I, I'm just, I, I, I can't explain. I feel like people w- way more need to take responsibility for their actions. And I think something like, going to it i mean so for example like my kid had problems in school Mm -hmm. and he was fucking around and um you know obviously like a move and going to a different school is going to be different Mm -hmm. especially this school is like i don't know there's like a (laughs) website that judges like education and like the level right but oftentimes be aware that kids can rate their own schools 
Yeah. And any student that gets homework from a teacher at a school mm-hmm. feels very compelled to leave a one star review. Uh, and so like if you go on any school and you could look at the Google reviews, they're really, really funny. And I recommend doing this to anyone that is interested and has some time to kill. Look up any school in your in your area. And I'll have like a Google review. Look at the like Google it. reviews. They will literally be this school sucks. Someone should light it on fire. Teachers are mean and should be in jail. One out of five stars. Yeah. Brilliant. All the world's words will be spelled incorrectly. There will be no periods, probably because the kid hates the school more than they want to learn from it. It's really, yeah. really funny. So just because a school has, my point is, just because a school has a bad rating on some website, just be aware that students have a voice in this. And yeah, any yeah. student that is at a school feels very jaded towards that school. Yeah. So that in mind, that being how said, does your school yeah, rank? How does the school rank? Yeah. How many stars? I, I mean, I don't, I don't remember the exact rating. But it was I, bad. I, I, no, no, no. I'm saying like this was like a higher level and, and a lot more disciplined kids. And I mean, not to t- take race into issue, but we live in a huge... Uh, Indian uh-huh. uh, community, and I feel that Indian kids are a lot more respectful and yeah, it's uh, kind of chill than culture. white people. Sure, yeah. sure, sure. So and um, yeah, and I think I think beyond that, I think it's Plus, also like if you go to school and you just threw on whatever T-shirt didn't smell like shit, and you just put on whatever jeans were closest to your hand when you dug into the pile that's right next to your bed, and you go to school. You don't give a fuck. Like yeah. it doesn't matter. We're going to do you. that in your yeah, future job like, because you know? it doesn't matter to you. But I think if you have to, if you've got like, if you have to put the time in to put the uniform on to get ready for your day, then I I just think you care a little bit more because like even in the uniform you recognize, hey, I've got a uniform. This is my job right now. Yeah, and I have to care about it. I think that's a very idealistic way of looking at it. Perhaps we'll see. Come, I'll come back. When what I do you mean idealistic? Why is that? The uniform changes the student. I get that. Like it changes their outlook on education. I could see it, but we'll see what happens. I think just as easily it would make them resent the school even more. Like, oh, not only does are all these teachers mean and so much like the school on fire, but they make me wear a silly little <laughs> bow tie, azure blue tie. Like, yeah. well, well, I think it sets the. I, I could see it. I could see it. I, th- I, I think it sets the standards of. Like, I need to follow these. Like, what I was trying to explain to my kid is, like, you need to follow these rules here that and not fuck around because going nuts and fucking around is for after school. Like, you know. So, wait. Okay. You, 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 well, you know, because that's that's what prepares you for later in life. Like, right. I, when I you go to work. Fun you, time or work time and play time. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and, and I think that's what it prepares people. Like, and one thing I wanted to mention I don't know. I'm a. I, this is just a probably ignorant assumption, but I know that like Europe and probably Northern Ireland is a lot more old school. So things like being a little bit more physical with students probably like I used to be fucking smacked with a yardstick when I fucked up, and that shit like made me a lot more disciplined. And now, like you, I mean, like so my my brother is a teacher. Oh, is he? That's interesting. And, okay. And he's at a he's at a school called uh well no, I won't say the name, but it's a school strictly for he's in a neighborhood where there's a high population of Lat- Latino gangs. Okay. So it's like basically all the dropouts and the kids there like they show up whenever the fuck they want. So he'll plan out like a whole lesson plan for like 40 kids and then one shows up. So then he has to reteach it the next day. And then, but also make a new one for the next day for that one kid. And it's yeah. just, it's a fucking nightmare. Or certain things like, I heard this from, um, I have an old friend who's a DJ that I was picking for the wedding from my old, uh, right before I moved to the Burbs when I was living in Chicago, I went to a Catholic high school. He uh, he told me that what went to shit is like once they had a lot more bigger grip on schools as far as like, you know, how strict and disciplined you are. They started making other th- being more anal about other shit, like meaning like so, so you know, h- issuing you a detention or smacking you with a yardstick. Once that shit got like way more restricted, uh-huh. they would be like, okay, part of your uniform is having a brown belt with a gold buckle and have it on every day with your shirt tucked in. Once those restrictions came on the other thing, I mean, there was somebody who got expelled for not having a belt three days in a row, yeah, just for something like that. And it's like. 
I don't know. I'm sure uh, that could breed so much resentment. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I could hit a kid. Yeah. Not with that attitude. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, chip up. That master stiff, will teach you. Stiff, stiff upper lip. Come on. Well, so How's like my that? so like my brother's experience. There was a kid who his dad was like a fucking sociopath sheriff. Uh-huh. So the kid felt like he could do whatever the fuck he wants, and he kept putting him in the corner. And the school's like, "Listen, we don't. We have uh, two little stars because of how many detentions we issue. You need to stop. You need to stop issuing it to this kid." And they're like, "Well." He's like, what am I supposed to do? He's an asshole. Like, what do you want me to do? He goes, well, you can you can do other things like make him, you know, write papers or or put him in a corner. So he started putting him in the corner, and uh-huh. the moment he grabbed his chair, he went to his dad and he's like, oh, he he touched me. Oh yeah. So and that and that like that ruins someone's career because of shit, you know. And I and what I'm saying is like I feel like in Europe or maybe in Northern Ireland, like there be a much more respect towards I don't know. Authority. You know. I I think in, in um, I don't know. I haven't been there long enough. But in Japan, there's definitely more respect towards the teacher. But that's because like it's ingrained in the culture. Um, we'll see. We'll see. I don't know if there's more or less respect. Plus, plus the other thing I that helped me, I feel like, towards becoming an artist, is oh. I realized like by having uniforms, work time, play time. That helped me express myself to the extreme after school. Sure. Like, I can't be fucking coming in here, you know, whatever the hell, saying whatever the fuck I want, talking about whatever the fuck I want, having patches all over my goddamn shirt and scribbling, you know, upside down crucifixes into my (laughs) binders, you know. I don't know. (laughs) We'll see. Well, uh, we we shall see. We will see. I think it's a good time to take a break. break. Yep. Mind reader. Thank you guys All right, for team. tuning in. One, we'll be two, right back. three. Break. 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 And a bear, 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 dreams come true. Welcome back. Eric, you seem so natural at the podcast thing. I oh. can't believe this is your first time. I double life. I'm actually Joe Rogan. Secrets revealed. What? There you go. Are you DJ Freddy Boy? So yeah. h- how does the school discipline, you know, come into taking DMT and doing MMA? <laughs> you know, everything <laughs> is about MMA and jujitsu. Everything. I actually know absolutely nothing about Joe Rogan. <laughs> I've never listened to his what? podcast. You've never seen an episode of Fear Factor? Oh, I, that's that's the only part I remember. And friends of mine were discussing the podcast, and the only thing that I could offer was that when I was a child. Um, my brother Josh and I would play Fear Factor. That was one of the games that we would play when we were like six. <laughs> like a board game? No, not even close. <laughs> I wish it were a board game. So we would play Fear Factor, and what we would do is we'd just grab a whole bunch of shit from the kitchen. So we'd take some ketchup, we'd take some orange juice, we'd take some uh, like mayonnaise, yeah, like like. like Tartar Uncooked sauce. pasta. Yeah, pickle. And this would so be really easy in yeah, a Polish and, household. And, <laughs> and Horseradish. We'd, uh, <laughs> we'd mix it together in a cup, and you'd think we would put it all in a blender and make a nice smoothie. Nope. We were like six, so we just took put it in a cup and like took a spoon and we blended it, and we were like, all right, I'm Joe Rogan. Welcome to Fear Factor. Here you go. <laughs> and then my brother would sip from the cup, and we'd stop playing almost immediately. Because that shit's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> so who? It sounds like a game that no one really wins. Yeah, that's the <laughs> only. Yeah, no, 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 no. It's about no, whoever, whoever's it the same thing. With I, filthy Phil would win. <laughs> I would, <laughs> probably, but like we would be at like a playground and we'd do the same thing, and we'd be at a playground and we're like, all right, let's play Fear Factor. Walk across that beam, and it would be like the beam that supported the monkey bars, and it was really high mm. up, <laughs> and so we would try and like walk across it, and so that was Fear Factor when we were children. And that's the most I know about Joe Rogan. I can't help but feel that if you had been assigned a uniform in your grade and middle school <laughs> years, <laughs> that you would have been less reckless. Uh, perhaps. Perhaps. Well, again. That's a good point. You get a lot more repressed having a uniform. <laughs> I'll, I'll <laughs> mention that. So we were talking about it a moment ago. Like uh, that like that fucked, like that asshole Christian kid that comes over all the time. <laughs> He's way too repressed. <laughs> He's the one who causes all the shit, I'm telling you. Uh, so, 
Eric, you predict that you will someday have children. You're planning Correct. on it. And Phil, you have a stepson and mm-hmm. want to have second yes. child. Uh, have you guys thought about religion in your children's upbringing? Yes. And yeah. what are your thoughts? I um I do not consider myself religious. I consider myself atheist. Uh, I am not like devout or anything. Like I don't go. You're not a devout atheist. I mean, like I personally don't believe in it, but I do not go out of my way to convince others of the ex- or of the non-existence of a sure God, quote unquote. Um, but since I don't really believe, and Leah doesn't really believe. If the child wants to choose a religion, they can, but we're not going to push it. Okay. And we understand that there's a lack, like that, that creates like a hole almost. Like, because where does someone develop their morality if they're not taught like a code of conduct from a text? Um, and uh, we've talked about it and we think we're just going to, you know, do community service on like a weekly, bi weekly basis. Just do some good. Really? And hope that that rounds the child. Mm-hmm. And like teaches the right morals and like instills some values. Sure, that's uh that's our because neither of us are religious, but we un- we we respect the fact that religion gives a good set of, um, again like morals or values. Sure. Good foundation. Yeah, it's a good foundation for a kid to be brought up in. And, and is so that, we is, is that the environment you were brought up in? Like, did correct. you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Like, what were you brought in? Yeah, Sunday school sort of deal. Sure. Uh, and so we just think the Church of Goodwill will help develop our kid to not be a shithead. Now, looking at yourself and who you are now, uh-huh. do you think you would be a different person if you had not been brought up in like that religious environment? Yeah. Uh, and it's not an easy question to answer, and there's no right answer, but do you think... I think like, my parents do good because they are religious like they want to better the planet because they believe that that's what they should be doing because of because of their religion heaven eternal life yeah and i think i think helping other people has its benefits i think you don't need a reason to do good things and i just want to showcase that to my unborn child so i Mm. think bringing them on to like different like building projects or just cleaning up the in town that we live in, I think that's what will give them that sense of character because you're, you're showing, you're trying to show your child why, like what's the benefit of doing good. And so I would try to show them that doing good not Mm -hmm. only is good for you and makes you feel good, but it also like helps. And that's what I want to show by constantly doing volunteer service. Very good. Very well said. Now turn it over to our actual current father. Uh, yeah. Have you thought about this Ooh, at all? Like, what's your religious outlook? Well, I mean, I can. I'm really sorry if you were devoutly like. What one like one God or like gods out there? Like oh no no absolutely not. I don't want to. I don't want to like breed some sort of I mean, conflict I'll, I'll, or animosity here. As uh, I'll, I'll I'll give no I need I can't give any more disclaimers. That's another rule for me because I give too many disclaimers on the what show. What does that mean? Well, no, I mean, well, I'll be like, I'll, I'll try and be like, well, not to be offensive. Well, not to do, like, right. I, yeah. start, oh, okay. yeah, I, I don't I, want to sound racist, what is but I hate. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Well, no, I, uh, well, I mean, I was raised in super fucking Catholic. I was actually talking about this with a friend uh, yesterday because um, we were talking about that. Uh, well, I, I won't stray off, but. No, I was raised in a super Catholic environment. So that means CCD, First Communion, Confirmation, Mass on Everything. Sundays. Baptism, yeah. yeah. I was uh, in a Catholic school, yeah. And um, I, I'll i be honest, like those friends I feel like I kept for life because they were such a diverse group of people. I don't know. I don't know. I felt like there was a large, bigger community, but I feel like even if I went to a public school, Maybe it was just the '90s. Do you know what I mean? Like how people—I feel like people are way more disconnected now. Like when I t- like I've mentioned Kids this these days. Right? Yeah, yeah. Old man Phil. That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that yeah. I mean, like you know, you, it's harder to, that there's. I mean, you have all these people having anxiety, including me, as far as starting a conversation and stuff. And I feel like kids mm-hmm. were a lot more approachable and a lot more helpful. And uh, um. That aspect was good as far as community, but like religion, I mean, uh, I fucking hated 
everything sure. about Catholicism. Yeah. Everything. I mean, did you? We, I also just to, as a question. Did you also go to Polish school? No. Growing up, okay. Right, Polish. No. I was surrounded by all Polish people, and I didn't learn English until second grade. Uh huh. And so that like helped me a lot. But the funny thing was like, I always mention this to everybody that uh, I was raised around my alcoholic, you know, beating fucking dad. So I know like the way Jane Silent Bob talk English mm-hmm. type of Polish. Like, I mean, I remember like I, oh. I was at like a professional outing and instead of being like, so when you're um a lot more formal, mo- most pe- Polish people are formal and will be like, almost like british excuse me sir where where can i use the bathroom you know like very like <laughs> and i was like uh hey you where's where, the pisser no no i would literally go hey you where can i take a shit a mad shit like that's and, and i would say that like five years old Jesus. yeah because that's that's how i learned sure so um i mean my mom helped me out over time obviously yeah and she now in your 30s, you know the proper way yeah, to yeah. ask in Polish how to excuse me, where can I take a mad shit? Right. <laughs> yeah. Pardon me, madam. But like, yeah, I, I, <laughs> I need to take a mad shit. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I can. We, we only. We, we only. Did you read the sign? It's only sad shits over here. So, <laughs> no, but anyway, no. I mean, so as far as Catholicism, like, I mean, I was raised like there were a few people's parents who were like fucking connected to the mob, and they'd all have like gold crosses, but they're huge douchebags. I'm like, I don't want to be that person, sure. you know? Okay. It's like, oh, I, I'm gonna go sin. I, I'm gonna go bully some kid, and then just go to confession, and there's my yeah, reset yeah, button. Yeah, fine. Yeah. But the re- reason why I mentioned it with my friend is we were talking about the, the the new Lords of Chaos movie, and it was funny because my when I was in sixth grade, my mom. Once again, black metal, but whatever. My mom, she brought me to a Borders, and she's like, you have to pick out a book here. And what I picked out, I'm like, oh, there's a burning church on the cover. I want that one. So I, I didn't like religion. At a, I I think my experience was a lot more different from other kids because, po- like, this is proven by even, like, when you look at statistics, Poland is, like, because of, like, their old school um, values one of the hugest, most very strong pushing towards Catholicism uh, sure. country. Uh-huh. So to me, it was like, if you sin, you're going to burn alive. I mean, I always mention that funny shit that my grandma said, how my grandma would literally like listen to this program on AM radio where they okay. do pull this program, the podcast. Right? Yeah, That's yes, right. Yes, yeah. Yes. I hear nothing, see nothing, <laughs> say nothing. No, she, she listened to a, it was a Polish radio where they did the rosary all day in polish and cook and one and i started getting the music so you know alice in chains right mm-hmm. correct I'm, I'm listening to alice in chains and i would record it on my little tape cassette and she was like no that's devil music and i'm like what do you mean she's like you hear how they're singing you know yeah they come to snuff the rooster, the rooster. <laughs> i'm like yeah what and she's like you know how they got that voice because they're melting in hell and that's how you're gonna sound you know like that that's the kind of shit that i'd hear so it made me very i mean maybe it has something to do with my anxiety it made me really paranoid like you know i mean funny fu- I, I was I, I thought it was this is really weird i thought it was really funny that when you see um how how much they catholicism pushes being gay as a huge fucking sin uh-huh. so like i would literally like We'd go to the locker room or something, or the, and I'd see some kid's dick, and I'd be like, "Oh my god, I'm gay," you know. And it was like, it was just so funny how much of I don't how sure, how fucked up. So yeah, so over time, anyways, so I, you grew up Catholic. I, I became yeah, and then I became very anti-Catholic. Yep. I still kind of am. I it's more of like I just like to make fun of it and roast it, sure. you know. See, because I think that's the distinction between you and I. Whereas I'm very hands off, like do whatever you want. This is yeah. me, and you can be you. You're, yeah, you I don't. I I don't think. It, I think Catholics made the religion bad. I don't think the religion itself is bad. I, the ideals sure. and the values, but I think like this. Obviously, the whole pedophile shit and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but to be fair, that's kind of just like a auxiliary. Uh, I, I, I agreed. Facet. I feel like that's being, not. I feel like you're uh, dealing with ultimates, and yeah. I never think that's a good thing yeah. to do. Well, you know what's crazy it's is not like part of the doctrine. It, no, it isn't. But but I, I'm telling you, like this is absolutely like even proven. I've read articles where if you're a pedophile, it is like intriguing 
to immediately join the Catholic Church because that's I, where you'll get away with it. Because I'm sure there's some guilt that goes yeah. into it, and who like offers I, salvation from guilt? But the like, Catholic Church, you can't be atheist and feel less guilty. Yeah, and, and but but I mean, like recently, I um, uh, a lot of I I liked my uh the school that I went to on Facebook, mm-hmm. and one of the nuns passed away like two days ago. So like all the people that I went to school with wanted to go to the funeral to just kind of like uh-huh. reunite. And I posted, I don't know, I, I posted some shit about how, like, there's lawyers defending people who got molested. And some one of my friends, like... Wait, that, on that post? No, not on that post. Just a separate thing on my page, you know? Like, okay, I just... Okay, And n- No, I'm not going to be, like, I, complete troll. Yeah, okay, all right, all right. It all right. was just a random thing that, like, you have to follow me and, like, watch my shit to... So, anyways, I'm one of my friends, like, dude, that's complete, like, some Jew lawyer crap. Like that's that they're just trying to make <laughs> fucking money, and I'm like, no, it actually happens. He's like, it didn't happen to you or me, and I'm like, okay, well, let me look at this, and I and there's a site where you can look at how frequently churches like mm-hmm. transfer priests because that's a, like so. Father Bill, you're a priest. I sure am. You t- you touch some kid at I don't know <laughs> Saint Saint Hillary's. Sure. The moment you do it, they transfer you to one three miles away. And then they transfer you again and again and again and again and again. And it shows like, I mean, one thing I found <laughs> kind of goofy is none of the priests that I that I was there with at the time are still there anymore. I'm like, oh, I wonder why, you know. But either way. I feel like that's jumping to a conclusion. It is. It is. It is. But um, anyways, moving on. I'm not, I'm, so, so, uh, so currently, how do you identify? Cur- currently. We can't, we can't so make jokes about pedophiles, but we sure can't talk about them at all. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, Wait, I, we I, can I'm, make jokes about pedophiles. I'm going. I'm going into a rabbit hole with this shit. But anyways, so Seriously. I started. I I I also um because the shit that happened to me and my family. Uh, I'm gonna. I I ended up getting into Taoism because I was a very angry person. Explain Taoism. Taoism, I believe, is like a um no, okay. non. Uh, let me think. Like a. You know how in Buddhism you still kind of worship a figure, and that's Buddha or Siddhartha. I thought that Buddhism was all about not having a deity. And that it's about not really having a deity, it. but 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 there's a figure that you look up to, and and Taoism is more of like a guide to the values rather than uh, looking up to. It. It's sort of like here's the yin yang, here's the balance, and here's how things work. Mm-hmm. And if you're not good to people, then n- then not good things will happen to you. And it's sort of like it's more of a guide. It's not a like sort of like how I said about Catholicism growing up. Everything came with a warning and a huge like, you know, consequence. Here's my question. So isn't religion like the worship of some thing? Yeah. Like whereas with Christianity, it's the worship of God, Christ, Mm. the Holy Spirit with uh, Buddhism, you're saying Buddha is, and his yeah. teachings are that thing that is worshipped. Or Hindu, what is Ganesh. Your, yeah. If you're saying it's the, if there is no central figure, because uh, like Shintoism is the belief that every object or every like living thing mm-hmm. is a god. What is Taoism then? Like, what is your, what is your central? <sighs> what do you worship? I, I, it's. I don't think it's a worship. I think it's more. I also, it's. I, I would say what I believe is more a. Spi- uh, a uh, mix of dudism and Taoism. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not kidding. Like, okay. like that. That. That's what. D- it, it's. There's a very gray line between dudism and Taoism, and it's basically okay. that things are in balance, and there's a huge, powerful energy out there, uh-huh. and people sort of work, sort of like a like a battery, and okay. you know, if you the the difference. Here's the thing. The difference between Taoism and what I believe is that all these things. Catholicism, Buddhism, Taoism, Hinduism, they say if you don't do good, or if you do good, then good things will happen to you. But you should do good. To me, okay. I feel people can be free. So if you like to do evil, be prepared to receive it. But that's still your choice. Do your thing. Yeah. yeah. Because the, at the same thing, I don't know. Here's a funny thing. I always thought this was selfish, but I would feel like, why am why do I have as far as like balance and yin and yang? I go, man, you know, I have such a happy and balanced, stable life. I'm so happy right now. I'm so much of a better person. And then I think, what why why can't I help these people who don't have a good life? And I'm like, well, I kind of don't want to because then that would throw me out of balance, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like there's a reason why there's that. I I don't know. And 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 that's why even sometimes like politically, I'm sort of centrist. 
because I sort of I uh, and it's just Joe Rogan. Yeah, <laughs> the most popular podcaster ever. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't know. I just I think we were talking about I was debating with Bill about as far as like peace, or uh, a while back about how I don't believe either needs to be both peace and war. Okay. So that's I don't know. And that's and I don't agree with that, and yeah. I don't agree with karma. Mm-hmm. And we'll just never see eye to eye on that. Yeah. So now let's take a look at Gavin. Yeah. Are you making a conscious effort to instill these values? Yeah, yeah, these oh yeah, Taoist, yeah, d- yeah definitely. I mean, uh, I so for example, he had um, he had to choose certain books to read. Okay. Where yeah, you, you know, basically he didn't have to read books. It was just sort of like the uh, you're like the Taoist Bible. Yeah. You're gonna no, read yeah. that for your look yeah. for the one with the burning report. cross. You read the one with the burning cross. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, no, I gave him like there was uh, the life of Dalai Lama to read and it was like a young adult it was like 80 pages you know um and he you know he read it and i and you know the point that i i, th- I think it was good for him even if i didn't believe in that stuff because it's like you know what are you going to read goosebumps or diary of a wimpy kid or something or you know encyclopedia brown don't you dare insult diary of a wimpy kid <laughs> well, well well no i mean it was something uh, uh cool to check out like i like to i, I mentioned for me to get back into reading, I wanted to read something I totally wouldn't. Okay. So I read like Dennis Rodman's bio. <laughs> that bad as bad as I want to be. Or yeah, yeah. Or or how does don't stand close to a naked man by Tim, Tim Allen. Allen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, um, yeah. I mean, and he said he enjoyed it, and I, I, you know, I explain these things to him: Taoism and Buddhism. And he likes it, but uh, but he has a friend. The How old is he, by the way? He, he's eleven. Okay, all right. So and he but is fifth grade. Yeah. Okay. And I think um, the thing Did is, you know he I could tell what grade they're in just by their age. Right you're away. so knowledgeable. Yeah. I just wanted to point that out. He, uh, Will you sing the snack song? <laughs> Later. Okay. Well, he um he has that friend that's super Christian, and he got a cross from him, so he wears it around his neck, and I think that he like closet wants to believe in God, but he's like shy to mention it around me because uh-huh. I think it's just like, like the apostles. Yeah. So, but I mean, I, I don't mind. Like I tell him, I'm like, believe whatever you want, you know? Yeah. And, and that's I don't what I'm gonna, That's the approach I'm going to take. Like if, if my mom really wants my kids to be uh, baptized, I, I, I um, I'm sorry. I, I was know it's okay. So I have to just finish the train of thought. Yeah. I'm really wants my kids to be baptized because she has the fear that if they die week two, then they will roast in the pits of hell. Uh, and part of me is like, you know what? I'm not religious. I'm not going to have did my she? kid be baptized. But another part of me is like, you know, they just dip their heads in water and it gives my mom peace of right. mind. Why not? So I probably... I don't think I'm gonna have like a baptism party or whatever the hell the it's called sorry. christening. Yeah, I'm, I don't think I'm gonna have a christening and invite all my family and friends over and the things that people that are religious take a lot of joy in. But mm-hmm. I think I'm, I might just have a priest baptize my kid just so my mom doesn't worry that it will roast in the fire <laughs> of hell. So I think that's I don't know. That's how religion. But he could become the roast master general. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually the name that I'm thinking for my child. Oh, that's Rose good. Master yeah, General Roos. Oh, yeah, <laughs> RMG. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I don't know. Like, it's pretty deeply rooted. I, th- so I, I think because I'm not anti-religion. Well, and there's no way for you to not baptize your child and seem not anti. Like, that's totally an affront to your mother right, and, and her and wishes. So for for peace to be with her and for peace to be with him. My father, I will probably baptize the kid. That's very Christ-like of you. Yeah, I try. Well, it's um, very karma because he's doing good for other good, no? <laughs> there's a lot of things that it could be seen as. No, it's sensible. Yeah, I just think it's. I just don't like to create waves, especially among my family, which, yeah. is, very, which is a Confucius thing too. Um, but anyway, uh, the uh, the only other thing I've been thinking about is circumcision. Okay. Uh, a lot of people say. Don't do it, man. My parents, uh, of course, went with it. And you say, of course? Because like that was the popular thing to do because there was a lot of like research being put out at the time about how it like lessens the chance of cancer and all sure. this stuff. I, and that infection. Is, and yeah, and that has since been debunked. Uh, but I got years until a kid. Do you, do you so. know what's a side messed up fact? 
that I heard this from a Polish person at my work. Here we go. That because of the hatred for Jews in Europe, uh-huh. by ju- like after the World War, Jews get circumcised or what? What was it? The the Schwitz or whatever. The bris. Or, yeah, the bris. <laughs> I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Schwitz is sweat. And the bris is... Bris. bris is circumcision. Yes. And there was something like... I, I, I forgot where it was. Some, it was something like about having your own unique thing for that. Almost like a, like a cru- like crusaders trying to steal that to huh. make it for their own thing. And that is why... Like You, you get what I'm saying or no? No. Where... So... A Polish person at work told you that because of the rampant hatred for Jews, yes, that, that Christians II, developed the idea to do circumcision as something so they can like claim it as their own oh, idea. Oh, sort of like what's the cultural phenomena where you take something from another culture? Appropriation. Appropriation. Yeah. So they tried to appropriate. Yeah. Circumcision. Yeah. To take it away from the Jewish community. Yeah, and be like, oh, we, well, well, of course, there's going to be infections. We, you know, Catholics knew that for a while. You know, like type. Oh, uh, that's so, strange. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, so enough dick talk. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I, I want to keep talking about dicks. All right, go for it. Uh, a roommate, a former roommate, former roommate. Well, yeah. Yeah. Not circumcised. Correct. And I think that's the only person I know who is not. Yeah, because yeah. it was just so popular by the time we were yeah. being born. Uh, but science has since debunked it. Um, it says that there is no legitimacy to the fact that it helps prevent um, injuries or diseases. Uh, apparently, my mom, who deals with geriatrics a lot, says that there's some... It, it like... The cleaning process is difficult when you're at that stage of life. And so if you have a caregiver, like it makes their job more difficult. But if that's... And a little more sensual, I imagine. (laughs) But if that's the worst that comes of it, then I feel like there's not a health reason to. Yeah. So I might not. Well, what about aesthetics? I, uh, I I don't... I have not seen enough uncircumcised dick in my life to make the call of which one looks more sensual okay which one more looks sensual yeah which which is more appealing appealing aesthetically um i just knew which ones. how do you feel i knew which ones i drew in uh the like fourth grade yep and they were always uncircumcised did it look like that balloon in front of that person it did that was the dicks that i drew in the textbooks when i was like Stupid little kid. Yeah, you should have gone to Catholic school. <laughs> they would have disciplined you. <laughs> uh, but I don't know. Just something to think about. I know you want to know. Uh, There's too much information skeleton in the closet. Let's hear sure. it. I. Uh, <laughs> you are not. Are, are you sure you guys? Want, no, no, no. This no, I, you're worries not? me because yeah. the story you told and you like said TMI halfway through. Yeah, yeah. Was a little raunchy. And now you're even. That was not raunchy. Yeah. That was beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is a slight. I was always self conscious about this, but uh-huh. I guess I guess it's not as big of a deal. You know, like when you have something that isn't a big deal. But Every you, word you say makes me more and more nervous yeah, about this story. This is definitely. All right. <laughs> all right. Just, I, just, just say the it. Low point in the podcast. Okay. Well, well, my ma did not w- ma- want me. Because she's an old school Polish person. So she thought, oh, well, the old, the whole Jewish thing. She's like, no, we're not going to make you into a Jew and give you a circumcision. Okay. That's that's what it was. It wasn't appropriate. It was like Catholics shouldn't get circumcised. That's what it was. That because Wait, Jews they, do it. They decided to start circumcising. No, no, no. That's that's they what I got it mixed it? up. Yeah. They stopped it because it was considered Associated Jewish. With, okay, yeah. Okay, okay. That's what it was. So my mother didn't want me to do it. Then I actually ended up. Having some Doing kind it of yourself at the age of four. That's <laughs> yeah. why it's too much information. Yeah. I was I was in my shed. They were they buried <laughs> oh me in no God. no 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 no. Oh, jeez. I ended up having some like infection or something, and so she ended up having to do it late. Ooh. So I had how late? Uh, Baby dick. I think snip. it. I think it was literally like a year or two late. Ooh. So a year or two ago, or you, you were no, a year. Yeah, yeah, a year or okay. two. She did it with her bare hands. No. No, but she... Uh, <laughs> At the age of 21, <laughs> no, my mom came into my room. No, she did it with her bare teeth. <laughs> Safety scissors, Anyways. just in case. 
Mom, this is so sensual, right? Man, we are telling a lot of <laughs> raunchy anyways, mom no. stories. Any, anyways, what happened is I ended up getting it like two years old. And because of that, the stitch marks are very visible. So for a while when I started like screwing punk chicks in high school, I'd be like, what is something cool? I got a zombie dick because <laughs> yeah. like, stitch marks. But but I guess it's not like that visible. You know, it's like you become self-conscious of it. But sure. I didn't have any like, I mean, it was like a, not like a complication or anything. Okay. But I know that's like a r- rare thing. Like I never heard of anybody else having that happen to like where they, you know. Sure. Yeah. I've never late. heard that either. Is Gavin circumcised? I don't know. And I don't want to know. <laughs> you haven't asked? No. I don't know. I don't think he is. To be honest, because now I remember when he was flooding the house with his diarrhea, he was running out around the house with a toilet plunger naked. and Yeah, I was going to say, there must have been one point where he was yeah. running around naked. Yeah, no, that was a horrible thing because Kelly was just about to buy dinner. I didn't know she was getting Chinese food, so he's running around the house naked. Help! And I, I'm like, I look down, I'm like, fuck. Now I can't eat an egg roll because that's what that looks like. All right. Yeah, man, we're just learning so much about each right. other. We're growing, right. Eric. This I don't want to talk about what? <laughs> oh man, that's such a strange thought to yeah. have. When yeah, you see a naked dick. Like, all right, right well, can't hit the egg roll anymore. Yeah, <laughs> it's ruined it for me. Because I feel like a priest. <laughs> <laughs> now going back to your Catholic upbringing, right. you're predisposed Whoa. to it. All right, yeah, sorry, Bill. What were you saying? You guys can eat dick. After yeah. making those Bill, comments. what were you saying? Uh, something else. I was definitely going to change the topic. I'm so sorry. Um, so Thanks. you're going to Europe. We're going to Europe. Everyone's going to Europe. It's yeah. going to be great. Mm-hmm. What are you looking forward to most, Phil, about Amsterdam? Uh, I just, you know, th- a lot of, uh, on- honestly, like the art centers the museums the history because a lot of the shit in when i when i go to museums or like art galleries in like chicago or anywhere in the u.s i almost feel like it's a what is it called like a not an update i don't know what the word is i'm looking for like a real like a retelling you know like oh i heard about this whatever it's just a remembering of it you know like like like, a translation like no like i've seen and i've heard already you know so I want to see a lot of shit that I have not seen, I have not heard, I have not learned, you know. That's a and, very good point. And uh, I think that would be re- – and I'm not even trying to be funny. Like I've gone to – like we went to – I forgot what it's called. That uh, There's it's there's that place – is it Cantigny with all the tanks? Camp Cantigny. Yeah, that museum, the World War II Museum where they have all the tanks that you can climb on. Sounds about right. Well, is I that w- like south – and they're like Hinsdale, like Western suburbs. Yeah, like do you know what I'm t- have you heard it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been there. Yeah, I went there, and they have a really cool like experience museum. Like, like you walk through, they have like artificial trenches that are vibrating. Then you go into a tank, and you can feel like the whiplash and shit. And because uh, it's like virtual uh, reality type shit. And I'm going through all this thing. And That's I, really weird. I'm like. <laughs> I'm go- I'm going through all this thing with like with Kelly and Gavin, and they just want to run to the tanks to climb. Like they don't want to learn anything, yeah. you know. So I think it'll be a nice trip with the guys to sure. finally like. Tra- sure. And then the other thing, I fucking love food, and I just love trying new food. You know. Can I? Can I? This is a little off topic. Sure. I hope you're okay with a little bit of a non sequitur. Uh, yeah. So that's all we do here. <laughs> uh, so I teach, right? Mm-hmm. Um. Last year, I taught seventh grade history. Seventh grade history goes from Columbus all the way to the assassination of President Lincoln. So, uh, by and large, like 14th, 15th, 16th, and ha- uh, 17th century, or 17th, 18th century. 19th, and too. A bit of 19th, yeah. So, I was looking at So, uh, we had gotten to the point where we were on Abe Lincoln, we we're on slavery in the South. And I had just happened to come across this story where a teacher thought it'd be a fun idea to teach the evils of slavery by giving the students an experience. Okay. And so the teacher, who I forget like what southern state she was in, brought the students to a cotton field and had the students, who some of which were African-American, pick cotton from the cotton field, 
to learn about the horrors that the people during the time period experienced. And of course, like this leaked out on social media, the teacher got fired really quickly. How is this museum different? Like, I, I, just, I think it what just that seems te- weird to like to that teacher. It, it was a bad idea, you know, because slavery. No, thing. I I think that's a good idea. It's, you think it's a good idea? Yeah, I do think it's a good idea. Because I just when I when I heard your story about like like crawling through the trenches. Yeah. Like, why would you want to give someone that experience? Like, it's a terrible be, be, experience because to have, I, Why would you want the next generation to Because I get this feeling, um, I'll be honest, I don't have any fucking time to read. And, okay. And so definitely, like, Bill was telling me about audiobook. Audiobook definitely, because I listen to podcasts, uh-huh. it defi- I definitely retain the information a lot more and have a lot more time. And th- wh- But the thing is, when you read shit, you still don't, like... Get it. Get you can't it. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Because until you experience it. Because these days there's so much shit like that are not, that are fiction, you know, like Marvel comic stuff or, you know, like Lord of the Rings. Sure. That stuff that actually happened, people don't feel how horrible. Like, you know what? L- like, one thing that I, I got to mention so quickly. In order to really get the experience and really yeah. understand how bad it is, you have to do it, is what you're saying. You don't have to do it, but to go there, like, for example, I'll tell this. I used, I, I mean, it'll slip out once in a while, but Uh-oh. I used to tell a Uh-oh. lot more fucking like Holocaust jokes or laugh at <laughs> shit or laugh at shit. No, no, but even like really like or watching South Park and laughing at it and it hits a lot more at heart because when I went to Poland, I went to a concentration camp and you walk through the whole thing. You, the bunks are still there, mm-hmm. no mattresses. There's shit etched in there where people try and write a letter because they're not allowed to write a letter to their sure, family. No, and I have been. To, I was in Krakow. I went yeah. to Auschwitz myself. Like yeah, I yeah. That there's an experience there, and it is harrowing, and it it helps you understand exactly what happened, mm-hmm. and gets you as an individual to want to prevent something like that from mm-hmm. ever happening again on a deeper level. Yeah. But see, I, I think there need, is a, there's a distinction that needs to be made because like. Going to Auschwitz and seeing the horror and like being there, you're not like reenacting something that is bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whereas like if you're picking cotton, like that was a task that people were dehumanized because they had to do it day in, day out. And to ask a student to do that thing that is like, that was bad. I feel is different than like going to a historically significant place. Well, I mean, the way I look at it is like maybe it's students is bad, but I guarantee you, like, if you took like some fucking racist to have do that cotton thing, that might even like flip them. You know what I mean? It might have. No, I I'm reminded of a joke that a friend of mine tells. He's a comedian, mm-hmm. and he was talking about one of his favorite things to do is to play Call of Duty. And uh, his grandfather, great-grandfather, served in World War II. And he pointed out that what he does for fun was his grandfather's, like, nightmare. And I I think... And that's what I mean. I I feel like most of, like, popular culture desensitized a lot of this shit. You know what I mean? I think people need to... Like... Um, I d- I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's so that's so interesting. I don't even know what yeah. the joke is, but the fact that he kills Nazis for fun, like that's his recreational activity, is exactly what his grandfather may have might have been forced into. Yeah, and just maybe not like was fearful of it at the time, but had repercussions for having gone into that. Well, experience. not even like killing Nazis, but but it's like even how what they how they were. I read about. Um, it's really interesting. When, whenever whenever I see a good movie, I like read all the trivia on IMDb, mm-hmm. and how they were saying like Saving Private Ryan, which is even I I I usually don't like like po- I like independent movies most mm-hmm. of the time. They said I still think that's like the best portrayal of a real fucking war, and how they're that whole. Like ten minutes is so hard to not like tear up how they're going into Normandy. Yeah, There's, you're talking to somebody about his wife or something or his child, and then their head gets blown off right away, and shit like that. And that to me, that to me is art. You know, like sometimes you need to the, the like experience that. And at the same time, like a museum like that, or something, or even yeah. like the teacher, you have the 
what's it called like uh you, you have the disclaimers and the choice to not go through that like the right. t- so and i don't know i feel like especially like something like that even like having that concentration camp i mean i may be like going on that rant again but it's like i feel like in europe they have those places to have a better understanding why to not do certain things sure, sure. and if you had that thing in america like people would be so sensitive and like tear that down eliminate it we don't want to remember it and it's like well it teaches certain things yeah. you know i don't know i get what you're saying like, these are important lessons that need to be taught slavery was an evil that we never want to return to yeah to subject people to ever again and sometimes we have to and like to just read a book will not teach people the evils of it and so we need to do more but whether subjecting people to pick cotton or not is the right or wrong thing to do. I think that's still in the yeah. air. You know, I, I wanted. Can I say one quick thing? No, well, we gotta get back to okay. yeah. We gotta get back to like because you. I just think I just thought it was weird that you would crawl through the trenches of Normandy because right. I just, nobody enjoyed it. Nobody liked it. It was bad. No, you. So why, you were, are, we, you why were, are kids doing it for fun? Uh, and that was my point. That was all my yeah, point. Yeah. And we went on a huge tangent, and now let's circle back. You're excited. Your trip, Amsterdam. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow, I didn't realize that. <laughs> That's where we started. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's well, get no, back I on the path. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't really. Uh, I don't. The last time I traveled was to Poland to visit my family. So, and I sort of like, I don't know. It's not that interesting to me how many times I've gone there. Uh-huh. I do like to go traveling to other places, especially like. I was talking to this with my friend the other day too. Is how the last time I traveled, I the last time I traveled before going to Poland recently, I went to England, Italy, and, and Poland, and I don't remember any of it because I went through a breakup. So I was like in the shittiest fucking uh, mindset, and I didn't enjoy it at all. I'm like, oh wait, I was I took a picture in front of the Colosseum. Wow, that's <laughs> you know. So I don't know. Yeah, I, I and plus the other thing too is. I hate my family. So going with my friends, <laughs> you know, going with my friends who I am have a much more better chemistry with and less drama, I feel like I'll have fun there, you know. We will have the I mean I mean I could easily like even if you guys weren't into, oh, you want to go yeah, you want to you don't want to get fucked up, you want to go see some history and eat some food. I guarantee I could be like, "Yo, Bill, John, is it okay if we do this?" Sure. And we're like the way my family goes, no, no, we're going to do this. We're going to do what this person wants, you know, like. I do have my reservations about the day trip to the Windmill Village. <laughs> what? what? I, I already know about his reservations about uh, the day trip to the Windmill Village. Because it's an entire day of the vacation to go to a tourist trap. Well, I mean, we're there, like, what, a whole week? Like five nights? Yeah, so, I mean, what what, okay, what, what, what do you right. plan on well, doing for? Well, they have this argument, I'm going to serenade the viewers with a... Uh, beautiful song. Oh no, you were supposed to keep going back and forth about your disagreement. Uh, but then uh, the list, uh, you introduce your song, <laughs> <laughs> and then once you start singing, we'll return to this. <laughs> la, 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 All right. La, la, so la, I don't know. I just la, uh, the Windmill la, Village has no appeal to me la, 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 la. at all. So I might la, 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 sit out that adventure. Okay. <laughs> la, 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 <laughs> what What would you? Well, what do you want to do there? I'd rather go to a bar, meet a local, have them tell us what to do. Yeah. Then instead of, I don't know, like it's going to be a tourist trap. Like, I don't know, when people come to Chicago, do you tell them to go to Navy Pier? I would, if they're going for five days, I would say that's one of them. Really? You would? What One thing. Yeah. Okay. If they have five, I mean, because what can you do in five days? Uh, I mean, like, I, I don't think a local would have five days worth of shit to do, I feel like. I, I don't think know. they definitely would in a city, like a major metropolitan area. Yeah. They would toast the real shit. But well, I'm glad you're not mad about taking a full day to go to Belgium for that show. <laughs> that, I mean, as long as you figure out the logistics. Yeah, yeah. You think I'd walk 1,000 miles? All right, now will you sing right. the snack song? I'd walk 1,000 miles with you. Should I mention my my the show I went to or no? Yeah, so I want to hear I want to hear Eric's oh, snack, snack song. Oh, is that the end of your? Uh, yeah, no, we've what done. Was we settled our differences. Okay, all right. So that that happened. I knew that fight was coming. I saw it a million miles away. It was peaceable. Uh, but was yeah, it a bad I, fight? I was very worried that we oh. would go to blows, but it did not. 
And Not while the camera's rolling, at least. <laughs> yeah. And everything is okay. This uh, reminds this next me. Song, yep. No, the I, I don't even remember this next song. Uh, but I will sing the goodbye song when it comes to ending the podcast. And I will <laughs> all teach right. all the viewers the song so that they can sing it to their friends. Perfect. This is Hear Nothing, See Nothing, Say Nothing is the gift that keeps giving. Phil, you're going to talk about a show you went to. Yes. Oh, but before that, just the, the goodbye song comes from. So uh, because I'm moving, um, I took a long-term maternity leave because I couldn't re-sign a year contract because I knew I'm leaving in April. And if you don't sign a year contract as a teacher, or if you leave mid-year as a teacher, if you abandon your kids in April or December. If you don't finish out the term of your contract. Then they can take away your licensure. You're you blacklisted. Will, and you will never teach again. Ever. Ever. So I wanted to avoid that possible scenario. So instead of resetting your contract, I just did maternity leaves for a while because I knew I'd be leaving in April. And right now I find myself substitute teaching. And what's nice about subbing is you can do whatever grade level you want, anywhere from pre-kindergarten to high school senior year. Uh, and so I subbed for pre-K, and that's where I learned the snack song. And I will teach it to you at the end of the podcast. Along with the goodbye song. Actually, just the goodbye song. All right, JK. no snack song. The snack song, I, I just it's don't lost forever. It's gone. Someday I'll go back to pre-K, and I'll learn the snack song which has been passed down from generation to generation that's right but i forgot it so oh. next time. <laughs> I skipped a generation anyway phil your concert let's yeah. hear it okay so here's a good place if a tourist comes to chicago to take because so um Sorry, wait are we going back to the argument dun, 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 no 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 no. Oh, okay. no no um so i was um recently well like three four years ago on a local channel called, uh, it was a local, like, um, have you heard, you, yeah, we were talking about Chicago Go-Go. Chicago go Yeah. And there's a local channel that call, called JBTV. They have, it's an old guy that looks like Santa Claus who just defeated cancer. It so might be sh- Santa Claus. It might be, but people don't believe in him, right? That's right. <laughs> no, but anyways, um, he uh, he has like very popular bands on there. Um, there's a shit like he had a self portrait done by Tori Amos in the entrance, and oh, she nice. signed it. <laughs> Al- Alanis Morissette was there. Radiohead was there. Ween was there. Um, there was just a shitload of bands. I I couldn't when I st- I've never been to this place, their studio. And when I stepped in, I was like, I can't believe this fucking place exists because it was so cool. It was cluttered more cluttered than my wall here with just shit signed and autographed it was cool as fuck and um i like this band called failure i've liked them since eighth grade they're space rock it's really chill really ambient um i don't know it's it's a it goes well with me (laughs) and um uh anyways the singer ken also plays in other bands which i also love and I've seen them about six times, but we got a notification that, hey, they're playing in this studio for free if you RSVP. So I'm like, fuck it. Why not try? I did it, and I show up at the studio. Dude, the fucking, like, where they taped it, I mean, it's already on YouTube, and because it, it's, like, professionally taped like a fucking mm-hmm. studio audience. Wow. The room is the size of this basement. I'm not even kidding. It's like watching, like, these bands that I'm named playing wow. in your in this fucking basement. Here's my question before we continue. Yeah. Uh, while you were on this show, you know how like if you watch any TV game show, mm-hmm. there'll be signs for when you're supposed to, ooh, when you're supposed <laughs> to, ah. Yeah. Uh, applaud. And when, yeah, and when you're supposed to, clap now. I think. Yeah. Is, there, is there like a sign to like when to dance and like when to clap with the beat and the, things like that? Or there, no? there was no sign, but I know that um, like. Uh, Hang on. Hold that thought. I'm going to try and take an incognito pee. Okay. Can I you guys? Was also, uh, I've been holding. A oh my god! All right. And was okay. kind of secretly hoping that you guys would pick up on the vibes that I've been trying to send for I, a bathroom break. I did. Bill's okay. bladder apparently unconsciously responded. That's right. But will Phil allow us to go to the bathroom, or is he going to keep oh. us in his basement? You guys sit here and talk about it. I'll be right back. Fuck! I. T- All right. I and then I'm going to go when you get back. <laughs> Can you scooch in? I can't. Do it. I'm just not going to tell the story. What? <laughs> no. 
Because <laughs> uh, mid, mid fucking thing, like I'm. This is no, I'm so buzzed. Like, <laughs> no, this is fucking so. Oh my god. No, I just. Anyways, I just wanted to know if like it was very as like an because you know they control the audience. Yeah, like yeah. A game show. Like when you have a live studio audience. Well, no, there, there was um. Uh, like any TV show that had like a live studio recording. They they didn't have any sign, but they what what happened is um so people were running late because it was on a Thursday. Okay. And it was like they only have like a half hour to an hour slot to show up. Okay. So uh, because it's kind of like live or whatever. Okay. And um. So at first there wasn't a lot of people, so they had a person go on stage and be like, "All right, we're gonna make a shitload of noise, uh, to, like make it as though the room is full." But then more people showed up, so it, you didn't really have to like make up for it, so it was okay. super loud. Okay, okay. But um, yeah, it was it was a cool experience. And then they announced that hey, we got every person that RSVP to this, we have your like email and name. You get free tickets to the show Woo! the next day. Which was also with uh, Swerve Driver, which is like a British shoegaze band. Okay. And um, they're they're Swerve Driver. They're cool. Um, I mean, I I used to be into them more, but anyways. I'm gonna add them on Spotify real quick while you're talking. I uh I I ch- um I was like yeah I so so they said that you have to pick up your tickets at four thirty and it's at House of Blues, which by the way, I don't know how you, like. Every fucking person I hear, House of Blues Chicago is the biggest shithole ever. I, I the only complaints I hear is that it's expensive. It's yeah, it's like fifty percent tax. Yeah, no, I, you, I, I, it's not like like the the establishment is bad, but I, I, I don't even like the establish like the layout. I fucking hate, uh, the like the floor layout. The, it's all the sound is shit every time. It cut out five times yesterday. Wow. And, and every time I've seen a band there. It's like either way too loud or everything is so bassy that it just sounds like static. Okay. And the like the layout, I saw Behemoth there in January. Mm. And I didn't like here's a goofy mishap. I went to the bathroom right before Behemoth went on and it was sold out, so I couldn't get back to the front. Right. So I'm like, dude, I have to make this pit cuz I'm such a moron metalhead. Uh-huh. And I'm like, I'm just going to run through these people and not give a fuck because if they hit me they hit me and i start running and oh my god knocked over hundreds of people's I, alcoholic <laughs> beverage no 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 they had no paid. no it's Wait, worse you were at the rock or house of blues right yeah yeah so it's, the the alcoholic beverage that they had paid twenty dollars for falls to the ground it's as worse a result of phil's recklessness it's it's worse than that i uh the, by near uh, you've been there so you know where yeah. the railing is yes I didn't know that's like a special needs or oh handicap purse. God. So I tried hopping over the railing oh and I just my God. jumped on someone with cerebral palsy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I picked a great time to come so back. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm oh. talking about what happened when I went to Behemoth. <laughs> okay. And I was t- telling Eric why I li- don't like the layout. Because yeah. I don't want to jump on kids with cerebral palsy. You know? Oh, you don't? Well, I mean, not if I thought you were. A real it doesn't feel as good. Come on, it's so metal, man. Dude, it, it doesn't are you a poser? <laughs> You see, and this is why you have to teach right. kids to jump on cerebral palsy kids to oh know God, to know how to know how bad it feels. <laughs> That's right. Whoa, you know? Eric's sleeping now. <laughs> yeah. Anyways. Well, so so I was saying how um, I was saying how like how the blues is expensive and everything. So we had to show up four thirty earlier to pick up the tickets. Um, the food was fucking amazing. I had some the cheapest thing on the menu, which was like wings. Yeah. Were you at like the restaurant on the ground floor? Yeah, I l- yeah. That place is so good. I've had and like I am so I'm so proud of Gavin that he hates blues as much as me. He's <laughs> he's like, when does this song fucking end? <laughs> it's just two hours of <laughs> I can't get no money, can't get no job, just gonna sit here eat all my cone on the cob. <laughs> yeah. It's just oh my god, I I I don't even know. How, who would want that job where you're just jamming for two hours the same fucking riff and of, of bitching lyrics? You know? <laughs> like, anyways. Hey, you just don't get the blues. <laughs> but no, I was, I was like super impressed because I also never had blue cheese with wings and they had like their own recipe that they make in house. <laughs> house of blue cheese. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, anyways, we, 
the night went fucking amazing because I was like, eh, whatever. I, I don't, I don't know about you. How do you feel? But like, if I don't, I realized when I, I did this once in my life before. What's that? With where you see a band twice in a row. Have you ever done that before? Yeah. And I, I don't really dig it because I feel like it, I, I like to cherish how much I love that band. And I feel like I get sick of them easier seeing them that much. It know? depends on the band. Yeah. A lot of the bands I've seen for multiple nights are like jam bands, so you know it's yeah. going to be an entirely different set, yeah. like an entirely different experience. Like so I, I saw Sleep when they f- when they first got back together, yeah, and that was a little bit okay because the first night I didn't remember at all because there was yeah. way too much weed around me, and then the second night I kind of like remembered it because because I didn't smoke as much. Yeah. But anyways. I was like, eh, I'm going because it's free, and I and I want to take my stepson. You know, sure, now this is failure, failure, failure that you've seen twice, like Thursday, Friday. Yeah. Okay. And and Swerve, I was mentioning to Eric that Swerve Driver, a British band, was opening up, and I like them. Nice. Okay. So, uh, but um, and plus Gavin, like his first show was Ghost Main, a fucking yeah. SoundCloud rapper. Is that like, Reggie's? Yeah. Nice. And he liked this a lot better because there's instruments involved. You know. Sure. Like, but uh, anyways, um. Not a Xanax addicted kid jumping around on stage. Sure. <laughs> anyways, someday, someday Gavin will be addicted to Xanax jumping yeah. on stage. Yeah. Well, anyways, we go to this. Uh, we go to this thing. Um, the s- the sets were great. Uh, the sound was okay. But um, anyway, what was awesome is so. I meet this guy Brett. Shout out to Brett. He's a great guy. He knows a lot of people. Brett, you're a great guy. You know a lot of people, and we love you. But he, uh, we're, we're standing in line and. You know, Hustle Blues makes you get rid of everything, so I had to hide my fucking switchblade in my boot. <laughs> anyway, uh, Wait, so is that real life? Yeah. Wow. Okay. So, um, he uh, Wait, where did Gavin hide his? <laughs> you don't want to know. <laughs> no. <laughs> where the where the that's priest very, told him to. That's <laughs> a very dangerous place to hide <laughs> a switchblade. <laughs> <laughs> You need his mouth. Con- the dis mm-hmm. the discipline from Catholic schools gives him control. That's you know, right. But no, but anyway, <laughs> anyways, so we, uh, we're waiting in line, and this guy has to get rid of all his food because they won't let him in. So he's got, like, a bag of combos and, like, two energy drinks, and I'm talking to him, and he's cool and shit. He downs these fucking energy drinks, and he could not stop talking, but he's a cool, he's a nice guy and everything, but we were talking to him the whole time, and um, we, we, we got front row because we showed up so early. Nice. And he's telling me he's like so so you know that's that's uh that's the drummer's wife and th- and that's and that's the singer's kids that's ki- ki- singer's son and that's a bassist to two kids, and they're all coming up uh you know where the railing is and uh, where security stands to control like crowd to surfing? separate the stage and yeah, the, so like there's a little pathway in front of the stage yeah yeah well there's also a step there for uh, security to stand on in case like someone's crowd surfing yeah all the band members kids and the wife were sitting there. So, and Gavin was like, I feel like sitting on the ground now. I feel like, I, I saw these other kids sit, so now I want to. I'm like, all right, there's like three songs, like four songs left. Can you just chill? It's like, I'm so t- I just want to sleep. And I got like so enraged. I just kept looking at that security went away, and I just threw him over the yeah. railing to sit with the other kids. Ah! And he was like real happy because he, he didn't go to sleep. He watched the whole show from there. But um, Gavin enjoyed the show. And the funny thing is, like, after I waited a little bit because I wanted to wait for, you know, guitar picks or set list. And s- everyone's clearing out. Security, like, they're like, wait, the band left one kid? I'm like, no, no, that's my kid. He's like, what? No, you can't do that shit again. He grabs me by the arm. He's like, he has to walk out this way. He has to walk out this way. Like, like the way around to the exit, you know, where they take all the crowd surfers. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I'm going to lose my kid that way. And Gavin just ran because <laughs> he thought. It was, so I'm like, "See, I lost him." And and he came back to the right place. Luckily, he's like, "Yeah, you know what? I got my eye on you. I got my eye on you." He's just being a total prick. So I asked another security guard to give me one of the picks, and he get he got me a pick. We're walking downstairs, and um, yeah. Uh, the other security goes, "You're looking for the." She's on her walkie talkie. She's like, "Oh, you're looking for that kid who got put over the railing, right?" And I'm like, "Gavin, you know." If I uh, if I tap your shoulder or tickle you, we we gotta run because <laughs> I, th- I thought they were gonna fine us or yeah. something. It's fucking House of Blues. Everything's you come about with me. us, buddy. Yeah, and she's like, no, no, wait here. I've got something for you. I got some. So they gave us like uh like written by the band 
because they i guess they wrote like there's certain hits they don't like playing so they just wrote down by hand the hits like in permanent marker question mark should we play this in between here and they give us the set list so nice. cool. and then the funny thing is we got on the train and there was a homeless man who i think shat himself and he gave his speech about how hello my name's charlie I, I, I'm a veteran and you know, I haven't, you, you know, I, I'm I, not a thief. I'm not a drug addict. Yeah. I hope you keep, I, co- I hope when you have any prayers, you keep me in them because I, 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 I haven't been dealt a great, you know, deck of cards and I, I, I would take anything, not just money, just a- a- any food because I'm very hungry. And Gavin just taps me on the show and goes, isn't that guy from a Cheech and Chong movie? <laughs> <laughs> so I, that made me laugh myself. Yeah. <laughs> But anyways, it, it was it was a good night. So good. Now it was really good. Did they play uh what's that one song? She acts just like a nurse. Yeah, nurse who loved me. That's yeah. the one song that was question marked and they didn't play it. Ah, because everybody oh. wants it because uh, Perfect Circle covered it. Oh, okay. did they? And actually, now that um, what I didn't know that this guy told me is that two cool facts. Um, Greg who plays uh, well they switch off guitar and bass and failure. Greg also um, plays in a band called Autolux, but they're kind of like taking a break. Now that Smashing Pumpkins is on tour with James, the original guitarist, you know, James used to be in Perfect Circle. So now Greg from Failure also plays in Perfect Circle now. What? Oh. Yeah. So that's cool. And the other cool fact. Wait, did Brett tell you this? The yeah. only band nice. I recognize is Smashing Pumpkins. <laughs> I'm sorry, Phil. Perfect Circle is uh, the singer of Tools side thing. Don't know who. Tool. Just kidding. Just kidding. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Just what? kidding. Maynard, you don't know Maynard. Th- th- there's there's <laughs> some Tool fans going nuts right now. Those yeah, fucking I, Tool fans. I, I apologize. No, but I do know who Tool is. We invite no. you on the I show know. one time, and you <laughs> embarrass <laughs> yourself. You embarrass us <laughs> by not knowing Auto Lux. Can I? Can I interject? No. I don't understand the whole set list thing, and like I've gotten the set list, and at the time mm-hmm. I thought it was cool as shit, you know, mm-hmm. but. It's essentially just words that were typed into like a micros or like a yeah Microsoft Word document. Yeah, that they hit enter after every single song. Like I just don't understand the appeal of getting a piece of paper that looks like anything else that is printed on a traditional printer. Yeah, is, is I mean, that, is that me being cynical? I just feel like I I normally I, I, there's some really cool band memorabilia. I understand that. Like there's a, but I just think as far as what what's what in the grand scheme of like band merchandise and like memorabilia, I just feel like the set list is pretty low on the totem pole in my opinion. I disagree. Why? I think it's very intimate. I think that that is a really like good link to that show specifically, and that it really like impacted and defined the show you saw and so it because kind of, of the order that the songs came yeah, in. yeah and like there's some thought that went into it like it's the set list like this is what you heard this is what they decided to play mm-hmm. and here you are like you know this is it this is your memory of the night as opposed to like a fucking 50 yeah, dollar almost, t-shirt almost like a script for a play that you saw I, I i was gonna say that it's a lot more intimate because like when you get a record signed uh-huh. It's like you could buy a record uh, signed online, but you were there that the night. The set list is yours. So you kind of like remember what happened during those songs, you know. But me, I also value like taking a picture with a band member way more than like an autograph. Like I don't, because sure. people get, uh, like I know people who just fucking go to like Comic Cons just to get shit signed and then sell it. And they're long ass lines. Yeah. 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 So, but they're one, one of the coolest fucking because since you mentioned like cool memorabilia mm-hmm. every time i die is this hardcore like punk band and they uh they have like a few songs that they add cowbell into just uh-huh. to be goofy because oh, it's like you have the cowbell or something well, well they were selling it there autographed and shattered because they use it so much on tour <laughs> i thought that was like a cool yeah piece yeah. of yeah. no and you've changed my that's a that's a really good way of looking at it i did not think of it like that before now and that's interesting but I do, I would say, Bill, like normally a set list I would not give a fuck about. But then when I looked at it, I'm like, oh, they wrote, you yeah. know, Nurse Who Loved Me, question mark. And that's yeah. my point. It's just like, because I've gotten a couple and it, it, there's no like, 
defining marks on it. It just is just a piece of paper with yeah. printed out. It just a, looks like a printed out piece of paper. If you, if you hadn't been there, if you didn't recognize it, like it would mm-hmm. just look like anything else. Like you would just put it in the shredder, like any other piece of paper. But it's special to you, and I I understand that like it, I like it, it that shows the the concert that you were in in a way that most other memorabilia doesn't. Like and everyone right. can buy a band T-shirt. I was yeah. like way too. And there's happy. only like, yeah, there's only like three of those set lists up there. Yeah, I get it. Okay. I was like way too happy too because the pick. I just don't go to concerts as much as you guys. So. <laughs> yeah, no, I I was too happy with the because I could frame like the set list with the pick because it's a personalized pick. Uh-huh. So I yeah. think that's cool. That All is right. cool. That is cool. But uh, yeah, it was a. Uh, it was a good Someone, night. I think when I saw Real Big Fish once. I the band that they played with, uh, they challenged someone in the audience to eat a whole jar of mayonnaise at once for some just fun reason. Yeah. And they were selling the autographed thing of mayo, which was kind of a weird memorabilia moment. Yeah. Well, I wonder that's how you got to preserve that. <laughs> yeah. Right? So you like keep it in your fridge. No, like, no, no, don't take that one. No, 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 don't take that one. Like Guy <laughs> Fieri <laughs> throwing <laughs> autographed <laughs> Ling cuisines, <laughs> like autographed hams. Uh, yeah, same same kind of thing. Like, you know, that's the one I can't cook. You know, it's a or I don't know if I was interrupting someone. No, you're oh, good. Yeah. Go for you're it. Y- you know, it's a super interesting fact. Uh, this was like a fucking like tangent rabbit hole that it went down. Like, I was listening to uh, this podcast that just like By Joe Rogan. No, no, <laughs> no. It was uh, I don't know if it was like things you should know or so- something that b- will blow your mind. I don't know. It was some cool Welcome podcast. Watchmojos dot com top ten things you should know. <laughs> well, well it, it was like um, they were talking about how. Uh, well, they're saying how like I don't know if they how they went into this, but you know how like guitar pick or something or uh, set list. They were talking about like what do people value about this, and it's like. You know, one thing that could be cool for a science nerd is that that person's DNA is on that pic. Yeah. And the f- the funny thing that I thought that I didn't even th- ever think about, I keep seeing all these articles online, like Facebook, like so many people sharing like there's fecal matter in McDonald's touchscreens or ketchup or there's fecal matter in Starbucks coffee. I'm sure. Have you guys heard of these no. before? You've never heard of that? Nope. Yeah, there, there oh, was. Oh, that makes sense, though. But, but yeah, that's the thing. I I actually listened to a Neil deGrasse Tyson podcast, and he said that every time you exchange any surface area with your body, you are exchanging fecal matter DNA. Be- n- not even if you wiped your ass that day, because just the scent, the germs from the scent, goes on you. Uh, so I you could live. Debunked science, though. Like I don't. The I don't. That you carry poop follicles with you because yeah. you shit it's put into the air and so you it's in your nose or i i thought that was like debunked like m- that myth is busted i i i, I heard that your con anytime you get near a person you are already like right now we're exchanging, exchanging molecules yeah. molecules yeah i mean not even that even like breath molecules or whatever y- you know weird maybe i accidentally talking like talking too drooly and and one of my little beads of spit landed on someone's arm you know right or we so, breathe it in because now it's in the air yeah that must have been a very difficult lecture to deliver to the <laughs> graduate <laughs> chemistry students what about poop yeah <laughs> just all right let's talk about poop matter real quick yeah this this is the, this is the routine of our show pedophile jokes dicks and then poop yep that's right Quick update. Tell I really want to change that, that we had a quote-unquote poop episode. It's fucking every episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that poop Leah, episode was fun, though. <laughs> Leah, my wife, played a game of Ticket to Ride with her family and some friends. What is Ticket to Ride? Ticket to Ride is a train board game where you are trying to build a rail that goes transcontinentally, and whoever has the most connected rail, essentially... Like the train that could travel essentially across the continent uh, wins. Okay. This is a board game? Yeah, it's a board game. And she won. She won the board game. Uh, Mm. I'm not going to say this is the proudest moment of my life, but kudos to her. She beat her family at Ticket to Ride. (laughs) She's also incredibly competitive, and I never win in board games with her. Um, But that's okay. You can't always win. No. I, uh, Especially as a husband. Am yeah. I right? <laughs> <laughs> happy wife, happy liar. <laughs> let her win. Let her win. 
Yeah, I uh, I already mentioned how many board games Kelly has, and I never wanted to get into Risk because uh, I don't know. I just like that whole Civil War setup just seems stupid to me. It's like boring. Uh, and my issue with the game is that it's so much buy-in. Like you take so much time setting it up. Yeah, take so much time reading like the rules, your armies, and then more often than not, you lose. Yeah, and I feel like that's okay with a board game that takes like an hour. But mm-hmm. for Risk, where you've literally spent an, a whole day trying to win, the loss is uh, excruciating yeah. to me. That's why I don't. Like it's Risk like Monopoly. Personally. It's yeah. like you got to get drained of your money. Yeah, you can't quit. Yeah, it, it's just another another board game where you spent hours trying to win and then you didn't, and it just punches sure. you in the gut. But the one time you do win, the yeah. one time you beat well, your family a ticket to ride, <laughs> well, makes it all worthwhile. Yeah. Well, Kelly and I found Lord of the Rings Risk version oh, and no. Goodwill, just and changed it, the game for I I thought it was yeah, I thought it was fucking awesome because they got the map of like the enti- everything in the Middle movie. Earth. Yeah. The, oh, Bill, you just finished Fellowship of the Ring, didn't you? Sure did. Oh, that's really cool. How? Did, what did you think? I've read it before. It's a good book. I 10? like it. What do you think? Uh, I'd give it 7.5. Okay. Do you think it was real, like Varg? <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, well, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. <laughs> no, then there's a foreword by the author afterwards. And it's like, yeah, a lot of people think this is like an allegory for World War One or World War Two. It's not. Shut up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's just a story that I wrote to send to my son. Yeah. So back off. But it's fun. It's a cute story. Yeah. Uh, they really portray humans in like a poor light, which kind of offends me because <laughs> we're not that human? bad. Yeah. <laughs> humans' lives matter. What do you mean? What, what, do we do? what do we do that was terrible? Oh my God, dude. Baromir uh, was like, Frodo, give me the ring. We can use it for good. Give me the ring. I want the ring. Give me the ring. And Frodo's like, no, you're a monster. Oh, see, I guess in the movie that's kind of lost because I... I view, when I watch the movie, I've used Sam and uh, Frodo as people because they're played by people. No, the hobbits. But the the only, halflings. The only humans are really Aragorn, right? Aragorn and Baromir. And Boromir. And Boromir is a bad dude. Yeah. Boromir, the... Uh, the shitty human with the, the horn. He's the meme dude that has the one does not simply... Oh, yes. I always call him Trevlin from GoldenEye. Oh. <laughs> yeah. that's, I, that's all I know, yeah. Melson. So, Boromir is a greedy bastard? Yeah. Okay. Dude, well, then they talk about the treachery of man and like the weakness of man's heart. Well, and I, I was gonna. S- I started watching Vikings on uh, Amazon oh, Prime. You? I hear the soundtrack's really cool. Oh yeah, it's fucking uh, Fever Ray, uh-huh. the theme song. I got into Fever Ray before I watched that, and it is Still great. So hip, if you didn't already know, yeah, <laughs> you like Fever Ray before they were well, cool. Well, well, no, it's really good, and I can't believe like. Like even like like my top black metal bands, top shoegaze bands, they're all from fucking <laughs> Norway, and we so is Fever. on the podcast, Phil's top yes. black metal bands, because I feel like that is all much right. Needed. All right, so there's gonna be all these memes <laughs> about me being a stupid <laughs> fuck about black metal. <laughs> no, but anyways, no, I mean there's just so much good shit that comes out of Norway, and uh, I guess that it was actually filmed in Ireland to like you know IMDb trivia. Sure. Uh-huh. But um no, you know what's the funniest thing? Have you heard of Norseman the show? Yeah. I everybody kept telling yeah, someone's knocking on heaven's door. No, but anyways, um uh I watched uh, I kept I everybody kept telling me to watch Vikings. Uh-huh. But I thought I got it mixed up with Norseman. Have you watched it at all? No. Dude, Norseman is because all these serious people would tell me, dude, you ha- if you're into that, like Lord of the Rings, you need to watch. Norseman is like a Monty Python version of of Vikings. Of Vikings. So it's yeah. silly. Okay. It's so silly. There, there's like just melodrama and stuff. Yeah, there's there's just like they're they're um they're on their on the you know the row ships. Uh, and there's like a captain. The long ships. I don't want to row next to you. I want to row next to. That that was literally it. There was Don't some row like was, this. There, row there, like this. Yeah, yeah no, th- there was some guy complaining like that. He's like, "All right, you're in going order overboard." To be a good rower, it's all in the technique. Yeah, and he and he throws him off the ship, and they keep throwing him off the ship until just the captain's left. He's like, "Well, fuck, how am I getting to the island now?" Okay, because he killed. Or, the, or there's like <laughs> there's like f- like f- eight elders who oh. want to reach Valhalla, and they're standing Valhalla. over. They're they're standing over a waterfall, and the way to reach it is to like the wisest like like if you live the life of wisdom, you're supposed to like jump to into this waterfall to your death, but you'll be saved. 
to the heart. So he's like, well, well, actually, you're the wisest one. You go first, you know? And he goes and he just splats and he's like, I, I don't think I want to go to Valhalla anymore. <laughs> it's, just, <laughs> it's just so, oh, man. But then I watched Vikings and it was really good. I don't know. You know what else is good? Fucking um, uh, Proven Innocence. What, have you have you watched that? Is that with about? John Lithgow? No, it's I with get, Kelsey Grammer. I don't. I hope I don't lose any respect from either you or the viewership. But I find myself not watching TV okay. at all. Uh, <laughs> and I don't know. I just I can. I ugh, my parents sure watch a whole lot of it. And right yeah. now, in the last two months, I have. I'm with them. And just the things that they watch and like the stories that play out. Yeah. I just find very like done before and try it is are you being called for no some kid is calling for my kid but he can go fuck himself you heard <laughs> it here uh, <laughs> okay no i just don't watch that tv much tv so most times if you say hold hey, on did you, watch no, you know what yeah, yeah. Um, I'll be okay right. All, right. all right all right so so TV we can talk about I, this tv I, that i have watched that i do enjoy i don't know like i i watched the x files yes loved it all the entire series. I s- after Mulder left, and we had Agent Drag it or Dog it. I did not watch it. However, every season with Mulder and Scully was beautiful, and I really enjoyed it. I also, I'm very glad that these kids walked away. <laughs> I don't know. I'm very glad. So I'm just. Uh, I just. I thought uh, to stall. I would say TV shows that I have. Yeah, watched. and we started with X Files. X Files. I've watched all of. Um, mm, no, re- you most of. Most How far of X Files. Uh, well, see, and I didn't even watch it. And again, less, uh, like, I'm just going to keep going, uh, knocking myself down. I just, I found this really good Reddit where they just said, here, uh, here are plot relevant and incredibly good, uh, as voted by the viewership episodes of the X-Files. Yeah. And so I would never watch the whole season. I would just kind of watch, I would just kind of watch the highlight reel. Yeah. Sorry. So you uh-huh. haven't seen shit of the X Files? <laughs> Not necessarily. You like cheated I cheated with the clip. Yeah, notes. I watched all the X Files, except I didn't watch the last <laughs> three seasons. Also, the seasons I did watch, I watched two episodes a season. I just there's so much of it, and I yeah. want to consume. Which is why I was so impressed when you said you watched it all. Now I'm just Sorry. slowly. Just that's that's why I also I I, st- I stopped off at like third season, and I think so there's like eight. I do that with TV shows where there's a lot. Well, I mean, I I usually pick like three shows that I think are going to be great, and then I just it takes me like a year to watch through. Yeah, all them. so if I had done that, it would take. But even just getting through those seven seasons of X Files took me perhaps like a year. Watching just the greatest hits, the greatest hits. But it was it wasn't like it was two episodes a season. Like each season, I I would say like there were twenty three episodes per season. Yeah, and so I I think it was like half. Well, so like you don't do it because like you're doing something like say sketching, right? No, I could never. Uh, so with sketching, like I found that the only thing I can do is listen to a podcast, and that's the most I can divert my. Not even so like music or music. I can, of course. I feel like X Files is perfect for background noise. Yeah, and you had said that, but what were you doing while you were while it was on in the background? Probably masturbating. <laughs> <laughs> Multitasking? Yeah. No, never mind. Yeah. Never mind. Never yeah. mind. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, X Files, I've watched. So, what other shows haven't you watched? Haven't have all of them have. Uh, Twin Peaks I watched all, all of, of it all of every single episode uh, I really love Fargo watched all of it such a good show Chris Rock is going to be on season 4 which is really exciting the premise is kind of weird it's like a African American mob family and an Italian mob family decide that they want to reconcile their differences and they like two of the families like exchange sons mm-hmm. so okay. Chris Rock's <laughs> character goes to live with an Italian family and one of the Italian boys comes over to live with Chris Rock's sure. family. As Makes a, as a, a way to like smooth over the. I like it because it's believable. <laughs> um, in a way yeah, to totally over makes sense. The, yeah. The no one's ever that done these this. Sam's Lilies have had like a Hatfield McCoy kind of thing. So that's uh, season four of Fargo. I'm excited for. Um, other things that I have watched. <laughs> I don't know all of Fresh Prince while growing up, but like as a, as like after I went to. I think after I went to college, I guess I just have fallen out of TV. Oh, and I yeah. watched all of Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad is so good. Yeah, that but was like, good. That's it. Mm-hmm. That's all, that's no all Sopranos. It's t- all the. T- I've I've been thinking about it. I think the next show I'm going to watch. But that's the thing. Like I just don't 
do television as an activity like if yeah I, I i only watch it like seasonally yeah um what so do your parents watch <laughs> everything everything they watch uh sh- they watch blue bloods they watch chicago pd they watch uh the wire no s- <sighs> that, that's where i'm going so the next show that I am going to watch is The Wire. Um, JP loves that show. Leah's father is one of his favorite shows, and he's got it all on box set. And in order to watch it, you need like that HBO premium subscription. Yeah. And so since he's got the box collection, I think I was going to watch that next. Okay. I've heard good things. It's also a book. <laughs> I might listen you know, to a book. I keep asking people if Game of Thrones is good, and I never, I've hear, never, yeah, I've never, I never hear the answer yes. I just hear like, well... Are you really? A lot of motherfuckers die. <laughs> I've I have so many friends who are obsessed yeah, with I've it. Got, yeah, I've heard it's good from like ten thousand people. And like the three episodes I've watched, I haven't been impressed with Agreed. a single one. That's my that's my thing too. But people say it's a character driven drama, and so in order to appreciate the episodes, you need to know the characters. That's what because I have said the exact same thing yeah. to my friends that are really into Game of Thrones, and they say you can't just watch an episode. You need to care about the characters, and that yeah. sure. takes starting from the beginning. I just I don't know. They just don't shut up. I, uh, like, man, here's my story. What is it so like? I'm in fucking Northern Ireland where some, where most of Ga- or I don't know if it's most, I don't know if it's some, but Game of Thrones is filmed, or scenes from Game of Thrones have been filmed there. Yeah. And so I go, uh, like I'm in Northern Ireland again, where my wife is, where I'm moving to in two weeks. Mm-hmm. I am uh, sightseeing. I go to a beach, which was also the... And none, since none of us watched the show, we cannot make the correct reference. But it was like the the Steel Islands, <gasps> or like the Isle of Steel, or the Steel Cage Islands, or something like that in the okay. show. But we just Steel we, Cage Island is, the, is that is it Undertaker live there? <laughs> so we just go no bar, a no whole bar. I, I have. I'm going with my in-laws, I guess now I should call them, uh, my wife's mother and father. The three of us go to this beach because they really enjoy the beach. But guess who up else shows up at the beach? George R. R. Martin. Aragorn. Very close, Bill. The Game of Thrones officially licensed tour bus. No. <laughs> so we get to the beach. And there's like a hundred motherfuckers dressed up in like cheap plastic chain mail with like swords and axes as the tour guide is explaining the history and lore of game of thrones at this scenic beach and they're all in their like medieval garbs and i just thought it was the dorkiest thing on the goddamn oh my planet. god i could kick their asses and like i i know it's not fair of me i have been to anime central for six years now I've dressed up for this comic convention, but I just feel like like there's a beautiful beach there and you guys can't see it because all you can see is your Game of Thrones season two and not appreciate the majesty that is in front of you. Man, I just got so tired of all the dialogue. It's like yeah, it is, is, like, is it like agree, is it like agree. Tarantino shit where where instead of killing each other they're just like, oh yeah. Well, how about I go to your house and pop your wife? You can't pop uh, my wife because no, it's like yeah, Bill can do I, better. I don't care about real world politics. Like I don't vote. I don't follow who's running for what policy changes. Congress, yeah. Senate. So what Game of Thrones is is that shit, but just in a made up world. Agreed. Yeah. So like I care about it even less, <laughs> and like I kid you not like the one of the episodes i watched there was a torture scene. That, that would make me like it more just because i don't give a fuck about the dumb real world shit yeah. you know i don't know well, maybe, maybe that's why people scene. like it but there was a torture scene and still this dude's like finger is being chopped off and they still won't shut the fuck up about like oh but your mother is the heiress to this like no i i swear i've forsaken her and <laughs> like st- like it was just like the most fucking boring torture scene i was like i don't know put it put it on mute i i, I will highly recommend though uh off top like the we sopranos go. too okay you, to Eric. that's what i've i've heard that's what i've heard on the message board it's fucking so great i don't i don't know i just i mean i'm also in a 
mob movies real well. But I feel, and I, what I th- appreciate, like everybody bitches about the end of The Sopranos, but they yeah. wouldn't bitch about the end of The Sopranos so much if it wasn't great up until that point. I I think I I, I liked it just because I just I I feel like he was gonna die anyways, not to be harsh, but okay. but you don't know if he dies, right? Yeah, it's no, I'm saying like I, I'm saying like Gandolfini mm-hmm. died in real life. Oh sure, right, like right after the thing, so it's like oh. it would have happened either way. Yeah, so. was it one of those? Because like, do you want to know the ending? Well, because we read this beautiful. We uh, one of the days I was subbing, we did a play. Uh, no, we didn't perform it like go all out, but uh, the sub plans were: hey, read an article from this magazine. Yeah, In the magazine. There was a play. It was called uh, "The Lady or the Tiger," uh, and this king, he ha- how he would try criminals is he would uh, incorporate game show elements, you know? So Mm -hmm. what would happen if you were a criminal and you uh, committed a murder or stole something is he would bring you into the castle and entertain himself because there were two doors and behind one of those doors was a beautiful maiden and behind the other door was a vicious, hungry fucking tiger. And uh, the princess fell in love with a servant. The king caught wind that uh, that his daughter was in love with the servant. So he brought in this servant to uh, play, play the game, play the game, lady or tiger. Servant goes to the castle. He takes center stage. He chooses his door, and then <gasps> the story ends. Oh my god! And all the kids were so mad. They're like, "What happened? What happened? Oh, I wish I knew what happened. What a dumb story." Yeah. But I thought it was beautiful because they cared more about that story because of the ending than they ever would have if there w- if the ending would have been. And then he found the woman and lived a happily ever after. Right. Mm. So I actually I it's a powerful I literary l- device. The uh, cliffhanger. Yeah, and and I think it may be different for is that. What happened in the Sopranos? That's my, that was my question. Like, is it like that? Ki- kind of, but I don't think it's as bad because what you mentioned is like one story, and for a whole series, uh-huh. you kind of like put it to rest. Sure. Do you know what I mean? You just want to know how it ends. Yeah. Like if you heard one story and that's the story, I mean, it's just like, well, that was a shitty story, <laughs> but you don't, <laughs> well, you know what I mean? Like, but yeah. when you do it in a series, it's like, that was a fucking great show, but the ending was kind of like whatever, but you don't judge the whole mm. show by that one ending. I don't know. Do you want me to tell you what it was or no? Well, well, it doesn't okay. spoil anything, right? Because there is no real ending. No, there is. No, there is. Well, the th- was it a dream sequence sort of thing? N- no, no. It was like basically was it like lost. So, so his, I don't. I have never seen Lost, so I don't know. But it was like so. A, a, a new mob comes in town. It, it, uh, this is f- for our fact checkers. This is how I remember it. Uh, <laughs> this, <laughs> this, this, this. Uh, like so, his mob is kind of like under like you can't do shit because we got you like under a microscope. Okay. So he can't do any of his illegal activities. And there's a guy coming in town, who's someone's cousin that's powerful that he killed or some shit. Cousin Vinny. And, and he's taken over. So he can't do shit, and then it just ends like they keep questioning. They're like, "Oh fuck, they're gonna kill me! They're gonna kill me!" You guys need to go to this like town. You need to move out. And then the whole family, like right before they're about to move, they just meet at a restaurant. And this is exactly how it ends. Like you know those like diners with the mini jukeboxes at each table. Uh huh. I th- I forgot what cheesy song. I think it was "Don't Stop Believing." They they put that on. At the diner, and as they're sitting there, two like suspicious fucking like, I think like two black thugs come in. Uh oh. And then like after that, two two like really suspicious <laughs> like Italian. You said suspicious, and then your brain said black, and you said yeah. suspicious black. Yeah. Well, n- well, no, because then two sp- suspicious like Italian guys come in, well, so you don't know like what. Okay. So you don't know like what's gonna happen, and then and then and then like right there it just goes black. Okay, okay. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, so, okay. so you don't know if they went or who's, like, the shooter, but you know. I, I like that because, like, now, now again, <coughs> you said you were a fan of Breaking Bad, like, the Breaking Bad movie is uh, mm-hmm. in production. Wait, that's the thing they're making? They're making the Breaking Bad movie. Look up, it. if you're a fan of the series, look it up. And what the fans want is Jesse Pinkman. They want to know exactly what happened. They want to know exactly what, uh, if that... He is it, a, like, prequel, then? I... I mean, I have no idea. I mean, oh I, no, this no, was no, no, like, no. This was yeah, maybe yeah. like six months ago when the Breaking Bad movie was announced, and I was kind of reading through the message boards and such. But most of the fans wanted Jesse Pinkman's story. They want to know exactly what happened to him after. Wait, didn't he die? No. No. Uh, no. Right. 
He survived. I've, he, got I've, out. he got out. You know, he got he the neo Nazis had taken him prisoner. Yeah, forcing him to cook because they couldn't create the quality meth that Walter White had, and Jesse had memorized the recipe and was a pretty decent cook by the end. Um, and and then he just got then, away, I think. Yeah, but then he got away, and then nothing with about Walt's him help because remember Walt had the cool ass car that had like the shotgun that was shooting. Yeah, out, and it like. He had rigged it. He had made this mechanical device so that he had put the machine gun in the trunk of the car. And fact checkers, again, <laughs> just, I might have this all wrong. It's just but going in there circles. There was a machine gun that he had rigged with the parts of the car to shoot like in a line back and forth. And he used that to pelt the headquarters of these neo-Nazis. And his efforts are what got Jesse out. Um, hmm. But then but, he just gets but, out and you but, don't hear about it. Yeah, you don't know what happened to him afterwards, and that's what the fans want. But I don't fucking want that, you know. Like I think it's a poetic ending that he got out, and I don't yeah. care what how he spent his thirties, forties, fifties, sixties, seventies, eighties, nineties. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, it's I th- fine where it is. Just mo- leave it I think leave it mo- be. I think most of those really good shows are good <laughs> where they are. Like they're gonna make a prequel to Sopranos, I just, where I, the son is gonna play him. And it's just like I don't. What do I care? What happened in what the fifties? Yeah, I, I don't know. And maybe it's I don't know. You you guys you can just keep me in check wh- whether I'm right or wrong on this one. Like I think people get attached to the characters in the shows that they really enjoy, and so m- wanting to know what happened to them is similar to you like wanting to catch up with an old friend. But I think if you really like the show, you'll just appreciate who the characters were in the moment and you don't necessarily have to ask the question like what happened in five years mm. hmm. like i want to know what happened in five years after home improvement concluded you know? <laughs> right yes i just don't <laughs> think i think as a true fan of the show you would respect the director and the writer's decision to end your viewing time when the person was 25 yeah and you wouldn't ask the question well what happened next i would argue that like such ambiguity and like cliffhangers and unresolved, un, unclosed situations. Yeah, unresolved questions. Are I like to think that they're designed intentionally as a marketing ploy, so that oh, there they're is a reason. Flying for the sequel. Yes, you yeah. have to leave them wanting more. Yeah, yeah. Because I would. You have a product to push. And also, uh, uh, as far as like, that's, as, that's I think. Some is that cynical? No, no, no. I think that's a little bit, and I think most. I think most people will include those devices for that reason, but I think it's artistic in some sense in some shows. I I feel my opinion because I always look at like an artistic approach. I guess when you hear about like you know a gangster rapper, once they make a shitload of money, they start going poppy and sounding like stupid and not. I, I feel like. This or, or or with any any type what is of music. An example of a gangster rapper that went poppy. Uh, I know a lot of people like old like Kanye. Okay. And it's like a lot more like auto tune and sellout, or okay, even okay, like okay. Lil Wayne or Gucci Mane. Okay. And like right. I, I just I couldn't connect it exactly. Yeah. Now I see. And and okay. it's it's a lot with every, or like anything like even um like we were talking about how many like emo bands have pop hits now yeah it's like it was a lot more meaningful to people when it first came out and then they kind of like once they got rich it lost the edge so i feel like when right, dur- they get older yeah yeah but as far the, the way i'm trying to like compare to shows is that like so like the i'm sure i've i've kind of like wanted to look into like so how does the whole process of writing a show, a screenplay, and then a director, and then casting actors, like, I feel like a director, when they're on edge to produce episodes, they need to put out, like, the best fucking shit. So, like, say Breaking Bad, oh, number one show, they win all these awards. Mm-hmm. Two years later, they want to put out a movie. I mean, it's I feel like it's almost bound to be shit because that edge is off. Yeah, I don't know. <sighs> yeah. I mean, did I also didn't that feel like I I agree with what you're saying, but you I think from a less cynical point of view, I feel like uh, as the writer you develop like a fondness for the characters you create, and sometimes you just want to go back. Mm-hmm. I feel like some sequels are definitely cash grabs, but I think some sequels can be like the writer authentically reaching out to try and you know do things with a character that he's grown so close to. Yeah. You know, and I think good writers, the characters move themselves. 
Uh, I think that's the idea. And so I think maybe the writers thought the that they just had the idea and the character moved and they had this and they wanted to share it with the world. Yeah. Some are cash grabs. I feel like some aren't. I, I, uh, I wanted perhaps I, I hope the breaking bad movie is the latter. <laughs> I hope the breaking bad movie is not a cash grab is the yeah. writers having like an authentic idea about what's going on with these characters and wanting to share it with the world and not just trying to make money. Well, and breaking bad was Chris Carter, right? Correct. Who was writer for the X-Files. Cr- oh Yeah. You're right. I think fact checkers. So, um, perhaps anyway, did you I, like? Uh, we will have a next another X Files movie in the works soon. Did that you like uh, Better Call Saul? I have not watched it at all. Did again. you like Better Call Saul? I, I hear. I, I hear again. One of the man. One of the gentlemen that I worked with at one of the last schools. Do we name drop? Or you can if you privacy? want. It doesn't matter. Okay. Anyway, Whatever so you want. I worked with. The, I worked with a guy who was a film critic for a really long time. Loved Breaking Bad and he loved Better Call Saul even more. He yeah. says in a lot of ways it's better than the original, but I have just not. Yeah. Well, he's yet. a great character, that lawyer. Yeah. No. Saul, <laughs> Saul Goodman. Yeah. Saul Goodman. Yeah. So fu- such a funny name. Yeah. I I was gonna say real quick because we got like seven minutes left yeah. before it hits. But um, that funny thing, um, Proven Innocent. Have you heard about that show? No. That shit is f- a funny backstory to tell Eric that uh so they're filming in Chicago. It's a, like a brand. I think I like some of these shows because I never was like I watched Sopranos and Breaking Bad after it won all the awards. Like uh, I don't like being in the shit. Yeah, when, same with me. So uh, these are like all new show. Well, like Proven Innocent is a new show being taped in Chicago, and uh, one thing Kelly that I mentioned she works at a gym, mm-hmm. uh, part time. They were filming parts of it across the street from there, so it was like all blocked off. And Kelsey Grammer's in it, so of course I staked out the gym to try and meet Frazier. You know what I mean? And uh, the other thing I found out is um, my buddy plays a cop in one of the episodes. So I was like, oh well, let's see where this goes. Like Kelsey Grammer is like the only known actor in this. My buddy plays a cop. I'm not expecting this show to be good. But then I watched it, and it's actually pretty oh, awesome. Huh. I mean, I like it because it's very modern. Like the the premise is, so this chick went to jail wrong. Frazier is this like asshole lawyer who mm-hmm. just wants to put as many fucking people in jail as much as possible, and he put this chick into jail wrongfully. Mm-hmm. She learns how to be a lawyer in jail, gets out, and now that podcasts are around, she starts around a podcast contacting like people jailed who were wrongfully jailed by this fucking lawyer because now he's running to be like mayor or something to like fuck up his campaign. So I don't know. I think it was kind of cool. Sounds interesting. That is a really fun brand. I mean, I've never watched like Law and Order or anything, so I don't know if it's like a copy. what? (laughs) No, I haven't, no. There was not a time in your entire middle school, high school experience where you got home at maybe 3 o'clock, you turned on the TV... I and I've watched like on. three minutes of it. What? I just I remember hearing dun dun, and yeah, then that's dude. it. I Jack can, McCoy is my spirit animal. <laughs> oh my god! I can't believe that a human being has never watched it, an entire episode of Law and Order. Does Does that sound like Law and Order? That description that I gave. No. Uh, what not what not is Law and Order like? It, Law is Order it a cop so show? It's a procedural cop drama. There's definitely okay. a formula to it. It's like notice heinous crime, start investigating heinous crime. Uh, Bring, think you have the guy yeah bring one person guy. in wrong guy get mm-hmm. another like clue have a break in the case find the right guy bring him to court yeah i am guilty or innocent sometimes it's up in the air that is but cool. but like there's like 10 different versions of it and it was just always on and it yeah. still is isn't that like that's like csi or whatever right yeah <sighs> miami new york yeah. la yeah, so there's... I can still see, and, and I say I'm not television, but Law & Order is one of the shows that I can spend an hour watching and just appreciate. Mm. I don't know, whereas, like, with, with, with CSI Miami, like, there are just so many problems that I have with, like, traditional television that I find in that show, whereas mm. Law & Order, I could just sit and watch and enjoy. I also don't really care for any of the characters in CSI. Agreed. And or Law & Order, you like them. Because I... It doesn't. Law and Order is not about the characters as much it's, as it is about like the mystery or the crime of the episode. And I feel like CSI is more about like the individuals behind the job. I don't know, but again, 
my my opinion. What did you say? Seven minutes, or, and we, then we're we're yeah. officially done. I think. Yeah, I yeah, think. Sure. We, uh, Phil, minutes. if you have any last thoughts, last uh, no. feel free to share them. Uh, well, I have a yeah, I have an announcement that my uh, my cousin in Poland is releasing a ten song compilation of the best songs of Poland. Nice. Uh, okay, <laughs> how can we check this out? Uh, well, um, it's currently still in production, still in you know. It, it, I, I don't know when to spring it out as a surprise, but there's some good songs. Um, it's something to give us to learn about Polish culture, you know. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's. I think that's the only announcement I have. Awesome. I'll say I've heard some of the songs, and you they know, are I've, very good. Yeah, I've never been a fan, or I've never considered myself a fan of like <laughs> thank you Polish thank you. music. Thank you. But th- these songs, around. these songs really uh, have redefined. My impression of <laughs> of Poland music and Europe and the world, really. Yes. So uh, my gratitude uh, goes out to your cousin for putting the compilation together. Thank you. Uh, so I just want to say a quick thank you to everyone out there who is watching or listening to us. You Fans can, in Ireland. That's right, especially them. Uh, a quick shout out to our sponsor, Michael Jordan. Uh, for uh, you know, taking such good care of us this week, you can find us on iTunes. You can find us on Spotify. We're on YouTube. We're on. We're everywhere. It's hard to not find us. So, <laughs> so we're here we're for your, you. We're in your house. That's right. We're, we're everywhere. Bedroom. We're in your dreams. We're, uh, we're in your. You can go on dreammoods dot com to look up the meaning of us being in your dreams. That's right. <laughs> Uh, if you want to email us, our email is hear nothing, see nothing, say nothing at gmail.com. That's hear nothing, see nothing, say nothing without the G's at the end. So, you know, like you're talking real slick, like you're from Brooklyn, like, <laughs> hey, hear nothing, see nothing, say nothing. That was a good accent. I think we need no, to contact wasn't. Russ for yeah, better. Right. No, I'm just a poser. <laughs> and now, Eric, I believe you have a goodbye song to sing for us um. and the viewers. But before I get to the goodbye song, uh-huh. just a little sentimental note. Uh, when I was in high school, I was on a podcast called The Corner. Uh, it was very amateur. We didn't have a microphone. Uh, and I think we only had three episodes. And that was my podcast experience. So I'm glad to have moved up in life. That's right. To be in a basement with microphones. I'm and sorry, there's 10 looking, seconds left. And there's, here's the goodbye song. Bread and butter. Marmalade and jam. Let's say goodbye as quickly as we can. Goodbye. Goodbye.